The Ninth Circle Cult. Is it real? Is there actually a group out there created by the Jesuits whose members include various European royals, some of the most prominent political and financial figures in the world, including the Pope himself? Does this group participate in satanic worship by performing heinous, illegal acts upon children, including rape, torture, and murder? Do they actually hunt kids like animals on hidden game preserves? Do they drink the blood of infants? Also, in addition to the Ninth Circle cult, what other dark pedophile rings may exist in the world today? And what groups may have existed previously throughout history? We look into some of the worst of the worst today. We examine internet rumors that some of the most powerful members of society may also be robe-wearing child predators in today's Satanic Secret Society edition of Time Suck. This is Michael McDonald, and you're listening to Time Suck. <laughs> you're listening. Happy Monday, Meat Sacks. I'm Dan Cummins, Illuminati pool boy, puppet of the Bilderbergers, Freemason fluffer, the Pope's meat puppet, and you are listening to Time Suck. Hail Nimrod, be gone, Lucifina. Praise Bojangles, and thanks again, Michael motherfucking McDonald, for being nice enough to record that little intro snippet. Got a fun show for you today and a bunch of thought-provoking messages regarding vaccines in today's Time Sucker updates, if you stick around for that. Hoping I had a blast at the big Time Suck the Gathering event this past Saturday. Already had fun with our event intern, Derek, and his lovely wife, Paige, helping prep in the Suck Dungeon today, recording uh, today before, so, you know, uh, the whole thing gets going on this uh, the Friday before the event. So I'll let you know next week how well it went. Excited to meet up with a bunch of awesome space lizards. In the CDA Suck Dungeon today with Reverend Dr. Joe Horsecock Johnson Paisley. Yes. Running the soundboard, the micro peen jokes. They just, you know, they got a little out of control in the Facebook group. So Joe decided to have a penis transplant uh, this past, a few days ago. And uh, now he has three legs. So no more micro peen, I guess. You know, now he's apparently hung like a wild stallion. My, how things change. So new nickname, calling Joe H.J. For sure. Oh, Horsecock Johnson. Queen of the Suck, Lindsay did not have any genital surgeries over the weekend that I am aware of. I think she still has a normal-sized lady wing. So that's pretty sweet. Script keeper Zach Flannery, not sure what's going on uh, with his penis. But he is Jewish, so probably circumcised. High priest is Harmony Velikamp. Just moved to CDA to do uh, much more with Time Suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Yay! Hail Harmony. Uh, not sure what's going on with her genitals. I feel like she needs to hang around the Suck Dungeon a lot longer before I can make those kind of jokes. Speaking of genitals, today's Time Suck is brought to you by Hims. Getting older can be a downer in one area specifically, the penis area, in case you're a little slow on the uptake. Getting older can make your penis sad, but you know what can cheer that ween up? What can, what can turn that limp, frowny face into a rock-hard, happy grin? Hims. Yes, for Hims.com can connect you with real, licensed doctors, FDA-approved pharmaceutical products to treat erectile dysfunction. I know a lot of you love Lucifina, and you know what Lucifina loves? Chocolate. But also, she loves happy, hard, thumbs up kinds of penises. I personally have been lucky enough to avoid erectile dysfunction myself, but if it happens to me, when it probably does happen to me statistically someday, I'm going to be so glad that I live in the modern age where I can get some pharmaceutical sexual assistance. Hail Lucifina. So give your little love trunk the green light. Get some help from Hims. Hims connects you with real licensed doctors, FDA approved pharmaceutical products to treat ED. Simply answer a few questions about your medical history. You'll be able to chat with a doctor for a confidential review. And if approved by the doctor, products are shipped directly and discreetly to your door. So try Hims for a month today for just five bucks while supplies last. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval. Require an online consultation with the physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details, safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash time suck ed. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash time suck ed. Forhims.com slash time suck ed. Link in the episode description. Uh, today's time suck also brought to you by a new podcast called Scared to Death, starring me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also starring my wife, Lindsay. Hail Lucifina, hail my Lucifina. Uh, each week on Scared to Death, I'm going to be telling Lindsay two allegedly true tales of campfire horror in a new dark and scared to death studio in an attempt to scare the shit out of her. Tales of hauntings, demonic possessions, shadow people, unexplained disappearances, abductions, strange murders, and more. Uh, she's already been getting freaked out. 
already had to wake me up the other night to uh, come around to my side of the bed and snuggle in from a different angle because she was worried about stuff she was hearing on her side of the bed. So hopefully if I can scare her, I can scare you too. Probably scare myself. Let's all get scared. The trailer drops on iTunes, YouTube, other podcast players Tuesday night. This Tuesday night, this week, this episode comes out midnight Pacific time. So it's ready for you Wednesday morning. That's right. Midnight, September. Uh, 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 yeah, just this coming midnight. Guys, sorry. I'm all over the place. The first two episodes will then come out four weeks later, midnight, September 17th. There we go. So subscribe to Bad Magic Productions on YouTube if you want to really feel like you're right there with us in the room. It's a cool new little studio. Follow the new show for updates at Scared to Death Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Scared to Death. Also, custom Time Suck Carabiner. Awesome Time Suck University bookmark uh, now in the store. Bookmark. Clip that water bottle in your backpack. Stay hydrated. Keep your place in whatever word knowledge you're just tactilely absorbing with the fanciest bookmark you ever did see. Heading to Hollywood next week, Showbiz. Thursday, August 29th at the Comedy Store, the world-famous Comedy Store. August 30th, 31st, September 1st at the other Comedy Store in La Jolla, California by San Diego. Uh, More dates coming up. Chicago, Thalia Hall. Friday, September 13th, one show in Chicago, Phoenix, Indianapolis, West Palm Beach, Tampa, and more. All dates at dancummins.tv. <sighs> and now, it's time to delve into this week's Space Lizard chosen topic, the Ninth Circle Cult. If you haven't heard of the NCC, there's a good reason why. Reptilian space wizards are actively and aggressively suppressing it. Yes, the Illuminati has an entire division. Wake up, sheeple! Dedicated to cleaning the internet every few minutes of any information that could lead to the exposure or capture of its high-profile members. Another reason you may not have heard of this uh, cult is that almost every detail of information included in any quote-unquote reports on this subject are from sources that don't seem to be entirely reputable. We're going to explore them thoroughly so you can see for yourself uh, as we'll see, people's fears over the elites of the world brainwashing, hunting, killing, eating, fucking the common folks, babies, feed the majority of the Ninth Circle cult narrative. Uh, while the Ninth Circle cult may be a little hard to believe in, there are, however, many other examples of real incidents of pedophilia that make the existence of the NCC seem way too possible. And we're going to look into many of those incidents today. In particular, we're going to take a peek at the many sexual abuse scandals within the Catholic Church. And we're also going to delve into the Jeffrey Epstein case and his pedophile island. Before we look into Epstein, Catholic scandals, other examples of uh, this uh, pedophilia incident for sure happened. Let's thoroughly examine the Ninth Circle cult so you can see where my hesitation over the reality of this cult comes from. The main question we want to answer first, are European royals and upper ranks of the papacy and God knows who else members of sort of some sort of sick, deranged cult? A cult who kidnaps, sexually abuses, hunts naked children, children they kill and eat, children whose body parts are sometimes kept as mounted trophies. Now, initially, this sounds completely wackadoodle insane, right? I mean, there's no way this could be real, could it? Well, but sadly, elements of this tale have already for sure happened in numerous other instances. I mean, we did learn in the Robert the Butcher Baker Hansen suck that at least one guy did get away with hunting human beings, and he got away with it for years. We also know that pedophilia on a massive scale has been covered up time and time again thanks to numerous Catholic Church scandals. We know that people have somewhat recently gotten away with eating human children thanks to the Albert Fish suck. And we also know thanks to sucks on serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer that people have kept human body parts for trophies. But did all of this happen more within a secret of European society known as the Ninth Circle Cult? Is it even a real organization? All right, let's dig in. Information about the Ninth Circle Cult can be found on a variety of, shall I say, questionable websites like secure.avaz.org, catholicsarenotchristians.com, europereloaded.com, sites that I, I went on way too many of these. They look like the same dude designed them, someone who stopped learning how to build websites around 2007. And, and these websites say, it's the same information getting passed around on a variety of sites says Ninth Circle is a group that participates in satanic worship by performing illegal acts towards children, including rape, torture, and murder. It is a creation of the Jesuits within the Catholic Church and is membered by some of the most prominent political and financial figures in the world. The group was found guilty by the International Common Law Court of Justice of countless child murders and mass graves in Canada, the Netherlands, Spain, and Belgium, among other places. The Pope is considered the head of the group, 
and it is ritualistic as as exposed by their doctrine, the magisterial privilege that the newest sitting pope must drink the blood of a newborn child. This point has already been irrefutably proven with witnesses and testimony in a court, a painful blow to conspiracy deniers. Irrefutably proven. Take that, conspiracy deniers. Bold claim, to say the least. It has been proven in court that the Pope drinks the blood of a newborn child. Could that possibly be true? Reading that led me to Google, has the Pope drank the blood of a newborn baby? I want to find that irrefutable proof. Maybe a pic, maybe a video of the Pope wearing like a, like a I love babies kind of, kind of barbecue bib, gobbling up some tender baby legs, you know, like a, like a Midwestern football fan gobbles up some buffalo wings. Eating those baby legs, baby legs, baby legs, baby legs. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately, nothing even quasi-legitimate comes up when I try to find evidence of the Pope drinking baby blood. A lot of basement websites do pop up. One of the first ba- basement websites is thegatheringspot.net. Same website designer as the other questionable websites. Half of these sites I, I didn't even make it to because I would, I would click on them and then they would set off a code red security alert on my web browser. I do want to know if the Pope is in fact eating babies. I don't want to have my identity stolen when a bunch of spyware gets snuck onto my hard drive. In an article published on April 17th, 2004, the gathering spot cites someone named Judy Byington in an article titled, Witnesses Testified That Pope Francis Raped Them While Participating in Child Sacrifice Rituals. I mean, that's a pretty, again, bold claim. Uh, you know, and, and he is tied you know, to the United Circle cult as being basically the leader. Supposedly, Judy originally broke this story in an article in the Examiner. I clicked the Examiner uh, link they provided. It's a dead link. A lot of dead links on these sites. So then I Googled Judy Byington, the Examiner, to see if she's a real person, let alone an author. More questionable sites follow. I click on e-survey or EA survey WordPress or EA survey.wordpress.com. Uh, there's an article titled UN Panel Confronts Vatican on Child Abuse Examiner, Judy Byington. This article, dated January 16th, 2014, goes on to describe an actual sex crime trial against some real priests that did actually take place in Geneva, Switzerland, speaks of a Vatican apology regarding a variety of pedophile cases within the Catholic Church, does not address the Pope drinking baby blood, which I I would think would come up if that did indeed happen. That's not a uh, detail you leave out, not something you post in an addendum the following week, right? Just, oh, uh, forgot to mention last week that in addition to apologizing for a variety of church sex crimes, the Pope also apologized for eating a couple primies. He's very sorry about that. He was, he was quite hungry when it happened, and he regrets his decision. I mean, hindsight, as they say, is twenty twenty. So uh, he now for sure understands you should never eat babies, even when you know they're delicious because you've eaten so many other babies. Uh, this article doesn't mention Judy. does list her as a source, so I do more digging. Then at long last, I find Judy Byington. Byington is presented as an expert on Satanists in an article on the heraldextra.com. Slightly less shady-looking website, very tabloidy. Uh, Byington is or was a social worker and therapist who was the CEO of Provo Family Counseling Center in Provo, Utah, former supervisor over children's services for Alberta Mental Health, and she wrote a book called 22 Faces. It's a book about a woman named Jenny Hill's experience of growing up within a satanic cult, if that happened. Judy's book describes secret ceremonies in which malevolent men and women cloaked in hooded robes, hiding behind painted faces and chanting demonic incantations while inflicting sadistic wounds on innocent children lying on makeshift altars or tied to inverted crosses. So very Ninth Circle cult kind of, uh, you know, descriptions here. And how does Jenny know all of this happened to her? Good old recovered memories. Yay! Recovered memories. Once again, if you don't know, they hold about as much weight in court testimony as dreams do because they're as reliable as dreams. Uh, You know, they've been proven time and time again to be entirely unreliable. Numerous people have been sent to prison only to be released years later when their sentences are vacated, when people realize that recovered memories are completely manufactured. They're false memories. Legitimate therapists no longer use memories recovered through interviews with alternate personalities or hypnosis because these quote unquote memories have been proven over and over and over again to like, they couldn't be more unreliable. You know, m- more times than not, it's just made up shit. It's like, again, like dreams or nightmares or whatever. Uh, there, there's been nu- numerous suicides committed by people who thought that they'd been abused by Satanists for years when in fact that never happened after having these memories, you know, recovered. Again, a lot of people have went to jail because of these memories. It's very dangerous. Uh, legitimate therapists, again, do not do this anymore at all. 
I would discuss this more here, but we have went into the science of false memory syndrome numerous times before, like in the Mandela effect uh, suck. Let it suffice for me to say here that the mind is very complex. It's an interesting muscle with an imagination so powerful it can convince itself that it remembers things happening for sure when those things for sure never happened. Judy admits that all the tales of ritualistic satanic abuse were constructed from recovered memories. The entire book is based on a debunked psychiatric practice. And again, Jenny's memories come from multiple personalities. So if indeed she does have different personalities, you know, she's suffering from something now usually termed a dissociative identity disorder. So now we're getting questionable memories from someone who is severely mentally ill, someone who has a hard time processing reality in general. So from these highly questionable memories that were corroborated by zero additional evidence, Jenny Hill told Judy she was oppressed by a Jewish Nazi who worshiped Satan and was brought to the U.S. from Germany under CIA sponsorship to partner up with more satanic pedophiles hiding in high places in the U.S. Aha. Uh-huh. Sounds totally legit. Nothing weird about this story at all. Nothing reeking of the delusions of someone who is severely mentally ill. And then since her experience with Jenny, Judy Byington now sees satanic pedophile cults everywhere she looks. They're everywhere. And she, of course, fully believes in the existence of the Ninth Circle cult. Well, of course. Fits right into her very paranoid worldview. So now let's circle back to the Ninth Circle cult description, where it states that the Pope for sure drinks baby blood, saying, this point has already been irrefutably proven with witnesses and testimony in a court. Right? They refer to this court. Court, what court has this been proven in? So we looked into this as well. The court reference in Ninth Circle lore is called the International Common Law Court of Justice, also known as the International Tribunal of into Crimes of Church and State. So the ICLCJ and the ITCCS. Well, the highly esteemed ITCCS is supposedly based in Brussels, but good luck finding it. Good, good luck finding it there or anywhere else. You can't find an address for this place or any other mention of this place outside of strange little conspiracy riddled corners of the web. And why is that? Well, because it's very likely not real. This court does not, nor has not ever existed. The court was invented in the mind of insane 63-year-old Canadian conspiracy theorist Kevin D. Annett, a defrocked United Church of Canada minister. The international court everyone refers to when speaking about the Ninth Circle cult was it first showed up on his blog, murderbydecree.com. Kevin Annett, a little more uh, to learn about him, also an enthusiastic supporter of the Freeman on the Land movement, as well as a chemtrail truther who has also said that the United Church of Canada is not nearly transphobic enough. Sounds like a real fun guy to be trapped at the bar with. So let's just uh, delve into his brain a little bit to show that the, the guy who came up with most of the Ninth Circle, you know, conspiracy lore or, or found out about it, if you want to go that way. Let's just see what other things he believes in. This Freeman on the Land movement is this ludicrous notion where so-called free men think they can opt out of being governed. Seriously. (laughs) They think that what normal people understand to be laws are merely a form of contract that applies only if one consents to it. I know I've mentioned this before on either Time Suck or The Secret Suck at one point. Basically, they believe that you can say a few super secret legal phrases, and then these phrases are then just going to get you out of everything. You want to pay taxes? No. You can't be arrested? Every single law enforcement branch of every single government in the world disagrees strongly with this belief. How the fuck do people believe in shit this crazy and just so stupid? Like, how can you have a brain that works well enough to allow you to have a job and get married, drive back and forth in between the store and home, you know, et cetera, but, but also think if you just learn some secret, you know, a la peanut butter sandwiches type phrases, you could just legally do whatever you want because the laws of the world no longer apply to you. If that code word existed, which it for sure does not, if if it existed, someone would just post it online and then it would go viral and then no one would have to pay taxes ever again. The government would crumble and we would just be living in an anarchist world of continual structure fires and people getting raped in the streets. Would be pretty sweet though if there was a cheat code for taxes and arrests. I mean, please catch you right after you kick your enemy's door down, put a few bullets in their head and they're like, freeze, drop the weapon. And then you're like, showbiz. That's how they do it in Hollywood. And the officers just put their weapons down and just, God damn it. All right. All right, buddy. I don't like it, but he knows the code phrase. He's free to go. IRS sends you a letter, you know, asking you to go to court to settle an unpaid taxes dispute. We're going to have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go to jail. And you just send back a little post-it note. Just put a post-it note in, a, in an envelope. Showbiz. That's how they do it in Hollywood. Just case dismissed. So in Kevin Dionette, the main proponent of the Ninth Circle cult, he believes in shit this crazy. He also regularly accuses the Vatican, 
the government of Canada and the United Church of Canada of being far worse than Hitler. So he's not, he's not real good at history. He also claims that he's been officially nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize twice. No fucking way that happened. Kevin's blog has convicted, quote unquote, according to him and no one else, two consecutive popes of genocide and child trafficking. Uh, <laughs> he's, uh, they, they, he's issued international arrest warrants for them that no one has ever served. He's also issued a proclamation. This is my favorite part. He has issued a proclamation dissolving Canada and he's replaced Canada with the Republic of Kanata. Yep. Canada has not officially responded to Kevin's claim that they're no longer a real nation. Kevin uh, seems to be one of the few people who knows, A, that there was a revolution against the Canadian government, and that, B, the revolution uh, no one knows about was successful and they did overthrow the Canadian government. And again, Kevin, main guy behind the Ninth Circle Conspiracy. It, it, it seems as if he came up with this entire thing himself. And Kevin really does seem to be a crazy pathological liar. Uh, there's a lot of sites that share his, uh, his work and they all kind of seem to have the same look as if they may have been created by him for lack of a better term. They don't look credulous. Neither does Kevin, by the way, neither does Judy Byington. I'm not going to go into detail about why I say that in case I end up describing how one of you meets sax looks, <laughs> but you know, some people just don't look trustworthy. Judy and Kevin have the kind of look where like if they were the cashier at a gas station, I might not think twice about them in that context. I might assume like, okay, they can, they can handle that job. But if I was about to get surgery, like an important surgery that my life depended on. And then the surgeon showed up looking like one of those motherfuckers. So nervous. I'm going to be making my peace with this world because I'm going to think that I'm probably done. While it seems like all the Ninth Circle lore does come from Kevin, a few Ninth Circle cult believers claim to have gotten their info from an article that was supposedly released in June of 2014, spread widely in 2015 to the present. An article possibly written by someone else, hard to say since the source cited as the origin of this tale, a website called humansfree.com no longer exists. Neither do its archives. I'm guessing either powerful people in high places killed this website, uh, you know, deleted it from the web, or Kevin Dionette launched the website, then cited it in other websites to give his story just a little bit more legitimacy, and then eventually got rid of the initial website. I, I did find numerous sources accusing Kevin of doing exactly that. Numerous sources accusing him of creating fake websites to back up his claims. So it does seem like something he would do. One of the anti-Kevin websites is actually called kevinmustbestopped.wordpress.com. Who knows? Maybe Kevin also runs that website to make it seem like, you know, people are out to stop him from spreading the truth. Uh, but let's look into what this uh, initial kind of Q document source says. An article that may have originated on humansfree.com says teens were drugged, stripped naked, raped, hunted down in the woods and killed by European royals. According to this week's latest eyewitness to testify before the International Common Law Court of Justice in Brussels. Not a real court. The, the woman was the fourth eyewitness to give accounts about these human hunting parties of the global elite ninth circle satanic child sacrifice cult network. A former member of the Netherlands criminal drug syndicate known as Octopus testified that victims were obtained for these human hunting parties from juvenile detention centers in Belgium and Holland. Octopus? That's a cool code name for a drug lord. I mean, if I owed a drug dealer some money, I'd be scared. If all of a sudden he was like, bro, we don't get strayed by Friday. Octopus going to pay you a little visit. Octopus ain't going to fuck around. He's going to beat you so bad. You're going to think he has eight arms. <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> Octopus has the same amount. That's how he got his name. And yes, water nerds. I do know that scientists now say that octopuses have six arms and two little octopus leggies, even though they all look the same. Here's another snippet from this article. 2004. I was an involuntary witness to torture, rape, and murder sessions of drugged children performed for a group of high-ranked people of the Netherlands, stated a woman. I was taken to a hunting party in Belgium close to Brussels where I saw two boys and girls, oh, and a girl, ages 14 to 16, hunted and killed by global elites. I love that she would use that terminology too. Who says that conversationally? Who are they killed by? Global elites. The human hunting party was heavily guarded by the Netherlands Royal Guards. I was told that King Albert of Belgium was present. Huh. Let me get this straight. You, you were told that King Albert of Belgium was present. That, that's, that sounds legit. That sounds exactly like how a high-profile secret cult would operate by telling random witnesses who they've inexplicably brought to watch these hunting raids who their members are. Right? 
when when does that ever happen in the world? Something like, listen, bitch, we'll fucking kill you if you breathe a word about this to anyone. You see that guy right there? That's, that's King Albert. And he's going to fucking hunt some kids right now. And when he's done, I guess you're free to leave. But don't tell anybody about this very secretive organization that for some reason lets random people hang out and watch the things they do. <laughs> that's, that's beyond nonsense. King Albert II, by the way, king from 93 to 2003, has never been accused of any crimes related to pedophilia outside of the Ninth Circle cult that I am aware of. Uh, if all this doesn't seem, uh, you know, uh, far-fetched enough for you, check out this Ninth Circle cult description. A little excerpt about penis trophies. Eyewitnesses confirmed that as children and youths, they were forced to attend human hunting parties where they and other children were raped, with some killed and deceased boys' penises were cut off. Allegedly, there was a Dutch countryside palace where boys' penises were displayed like trophies on a wall. Some hunting parties were hosted on the grounds of Belgium, Queen, Beatrix's palace. What the fuck? <laughs> what a disturbing section of someone's trophy room that would be. Can you imagine walking into a, like a royal country estate and then you go into a little trophy room and there's like a stag's head on a wall and some African antelope heads. You got some some kudu, little springbok, American elk bull, ram's head, stuffed grizzly bear, stuffed Bengal tiger, and then just back in a little darkened corner, just a row of mounted little boy dicks. How do you even mount a dick for a trophy display, by the way? With the balls underneath? Do you, do you mount it erect or flaccid? Half hard? Shaved or hairy? Do you only mount the biggest dicks? I mean, it seems like a sad, floppy little three-inch, you know, limp dick would just kind of be a shitty trophy. Look what this topic is doing to me. What is big deal with dick trophies? Why size matter? Why flopping this matter? Oh, you know, think Chikatilo penis worthy of mounting. Chikatilo limp shamecock more still impressive than 90% of hard American capitalist greed win. That is showbiz. That is for mother. Fuck all other serial killer times of characters. Chikatilo first. No one makes dick joke like Chikatilo. Fuck Hollywood. That is how they do it in Russia. All right. Been a while since Chikatilo showed up. Showed up with some force. Just felt him in this topic, I guess. Uh, adding a little more to Ninth Circle Online lore, a guy named Randy Shock recently self-published a book called Shock's Double 14, The Ninth Circle, on May 2nd of this year. The Ninth Circle, just one volume, a very long list of super credible nonfiction titles knocked out by the, by the randonator. He also wrote Shock's Double Nine, Octopus Spider. This important work of literature is described as a startling account of corruption and hypocrisy at the heart of the Vatican. According to Randy himself, it's a brilliant piece of investigative writing. I do love that when somebody's writing their own review, they just, just lay it on thick. It's, it's, according to myself, my book is a brilliant piece of investigative writing. Uh, based on four years authoritative research, including extensive interviews with those in power. None of his books have any um, citations. Zero. Not one. Not one reference. Nothing. No sources at all. Uh, he also wrote Shocks Double Seven, Historic Kansas. This is a book about MS-13 and other illegal immigrants taking cars and homes and land and businesses from people living in Kansas. And if uh, that book is like Randy's uh, Ninth Circle book, I'm guessing it's a, a little, uh, you know, uh, light on the truth as well. And here's my favorite. So he gets so many books. I mean, it's like he, he pumps out like a book a month, at least. And he's been doing this for years. <laughs> he has extensive library of work. Uh, here is Randy's author profile on Amazon where he describes himself. And this thing made me cry laughing. I know it might just be me. It made me laugh harder than anything has made me laugh in a long, long time. Just because this, again, this is his author profile. He's supposed to talk, you know, speak to your you know, author credentials, talk about your books, talk about, you know, where you went to school. If you did go to school, talk about any awards you won, talk about what, you know, list your books have appeared on the, the, the genre you're working in, your, why you're passionate about this type of, okay, here's what he says. Hello, <laughs> this is your author. When I write, I pray and I ask Jesus to guide me. I keep everything very simple. And I ask the Lord to guide me with each word I write. My prayer is that my books will help people and improve their lives. I am so thankful to have the blessing of being a writer as I have written really since the 1970s. And I was also taking notes and writing even in the early 
1960s, from the time I began writing, in the third grade, I simply loved words. There was about 40 commas in that sentence. (laughs) When I was a police officer, I used the system where the officer speaks into a telephone and the words are recorded in his report. I'm going to pause for every fucking one of these comments because it's delicious. I did this for about a year on the WPD in Wichita, Kansas. And I have to say, I love doing my police reports. I want to pause here and say that Randy only got to write those reports for about a year because he was let go. I'm going to guess he was, I'm going to guess he was let go from the PD because he's out of his fucking mind. Uh, here's the, here's the rest of his bio. It gets better. I also love doing investigative work. And I like all that is involved with the good side of governing and politics and even news broadcasting. As my dad was a very good news reporter and investigator who really got me started with him. When I was six years old, doing all kinds of things a little six-year-old kid should never, ever do. That was one sentence. It was fun. (laughs) My dad was a real character and he knew everyone in country music. Like, what? (laughs) <laughs> real left turn there why does that do anything and one of his best friends was paul harvey <laughs> i doubt it i doubt that's true and if it was true what the fuck does this have to do with your books <laughs> first oh my god ah oh, this weird rambling stream of consciousness pile of word vomit uh just it just keeps it keeps going it keeps getting better i think i met paul And he shook my hand. He told me that I needed to be a writer. I have no particular ideology on any side. And I do love our 1776 Republic and our healthy U.S. Constitution. I always pray for our government and our Senate and Congress. I think that's uh, kind of in the government. I don't think you need to separate those. And I pray for the president, also in the government. Uh, No matter who is in the White House for the dignity of the office, I love capitalism. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I love people. Ah, uh, today I was with my neighbors, and I love seeing their wedding. Te- <laughs> and I love seeing their wedding certificate from 1992. What does that have to do with anything? They are wonderful people. His name is James, and he is a U.S. Marine, and his pretty wife is Susie. <laughs> my best man. Paul called me today and I went to the YMCA. This is, this, I'm not making this up. This is his fucking author's bio. That is about it for now. God bless and enjoy your life. You are the most important person on earth to the Lord. Jesus died for you and he rose from the dead just for you. And then he ends with, see you later. <laughs> What? Ah, this is the only guy who has written a book about the Ninth Circle cults. Ah, I love he's just, uh, I'm writing my bio right now. Would love to write more, but I got to go to the YMCA. That wedding certificate was pretty sweet. Ta-ta for now. I mean, can you imagine if Stephen King wrote like a similar bio, like when you open one of his books and, you know, it's about about the author and it just reads, Hi! <laughs> Happy birthday if today is your birthday. If not, have a happy day. Anyway, God bless. I always liked scary stuff as a kid. This morning I had oatmeal for breakfast. Sometimes when I was younger, I used to eat Pop-Tarts. Last fall, one of my neighbors died and I was pretty sad. Hey, did you know my dad knew John Miller? He ran a hardware store downtown and sometimes wore a pair of purple shoes. I used to think looked pretty cool. I don't like cats. They're probably nice mostly, but not for me. Anyway, tennis elbow is a real problem for some people. Sounds fun, but I hear it's painful. Love to write more, but my sandwich isn't sitting right in my tum-tum, and I need to use the bathroom ASAP. See you later. So this is the guy. This is the guy writing the Ninth Circle Cult. He also has 42 different books you can buy via Goodreads. All of his titles are digital. They're all insane. Books like The Human Race Was Created with Dark Skin? Question mark. The Duped White Race? Question mark. Oh, this guy just keeps getting better. Uh, another book is Planet Wicca, 
uh, or or Dovishans or Dovishans rises up from nowhere? Question mark. A lot of question marks in his titles. Demonic Ouija board spell casting starts again? Question mark. Uh, the true Nazi saga of George Herbert Walker Bush. Almost all of his titles have zero ratings or reviews. I haven't seen uh, across all platforms. Uh, so what did Randy have to say about the Ninth Circle cult? Well, <laughs> let me say after you know reading his bio, I don't think you're going to be shocked to hear that it's it's quite hard to read. Uh, there's virtually no grammatical structure, just stream of consciousness, borderline gibberish, just the rantings of a madman weaving in and out of accounts of real Catholic pedophile cover-ups and then totally unsubstantiated accounts of that fake court we just talked about, trying various leaders and church officials, even some celebrities of crimes involving, you know, doing horrible shit to, to kids and babies. Mostly he covers everything we've already covered. He does throw, throw in some new details, stuff like Pope Rat Ratzinger resigned after his guilty verdict by the ICLCJ court in 2013, while Catholic Jesuit superior Adolfo Panchon announced his resignation in May 2014. Both still resided under protection at the Vatican. Even today, children and teens were said forced to participate in human sacrifice rites and human hunting parties, many organized by an office at the Vatican. Love that detail. I love that somebody thinks that the Vatican has an office and that office is in charge of like setting up, you know, hunting kid parties, little kid hunting rates. I just, how, how do you answer the phone at that office? Hello, you've reached the Vatican's office for teen fucking and hunting. Oh, I'm sorry. You're looking for uh, how to buy a new rosary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me transfer you. Uh, praise God. Uh, then Randy continues. Victims were evidently secured by a mafia arm called Negranketa. It's like a nonsense word or octopus, and then taken to private estates and properties owned by prominent business and political leaders, including European royalty in the US, Europe, the Netherlands, that's fucking, that's, that's in Europe, and Australia. I love when people do that. Listen, they're everywhere. They're in the United States and Europe and the Netherlands. That's fucking in Europe. Uh, there, the children and youth were stripped, naked, raped, hunted down, and killed in satanic rites that typically involves sex orgies involving children and teens prior to killing babies. Oh, they're just throwing everything in this. The innocents were reportedly forced to drink urine and blood, eat human flesh, and watched others murdered, some of their close friends and human sacrifice rights. Was Albert Fish an early member of the Ninth Circle Cult? Sounds right up his alley. Oh, yeah, bring me that hot apple cider, and peanut butter butter, and I'll bring the cattle nine tails. We'll have a real shindig of a humdigger. Hello, my darling. Hello, my baby. I love the Ninth Circle Cult. Showbiz! Uh, Randy talks about mass graves as well. Mass graves are another big part of the Ninth Circle cult lore. There supposedly are a ton of kids buried in a variety of mass graves, and these graves have been found, but somehow uh, not been mentioned by mainstream news sources. Pretty weird. It says, since 2008, there have been 34 mass grave sites believed filled with children's bodies found in Ireland, Spain, and the Anglican United Church of Canada, though mainly Catholic native residential schools in Canada. The mass graves were believed to hold well over 350,800 missing indigent children and those of political prisoners who disappeared out of Catholic orphanages, schools, and hospitals via the present Pope Francis. Man, a lot of people. All mass graves have been refused excavation by owners of the properties, Canada, Spain, and Ireland governments, and the Anglican United Church of Canada and Catholic Church. So again, you know, it sounds pretty legit. Authorities know where the bodies of, you know, hundreds of thousands of kids are buried. But when they come to check on the graves, you know, some organization like the United Church of Canada can just be like, nah, right? Like that's, like, like that's ever worked. Hello, Father. Uh, we have a warrant to search the property for the bodies of thousands of hunted and murdered children. Nah. Father, please let us in. We need to look for those kids right now. Mm. Nah. Please let us investigate the murders of thousands of children. Their parents deserve to know what happened. Ha. Nah. Nope. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Right? And then they just what? They just, oh, all right, dang it. And then just walk away. If anyone uh, listening still thinks Randy is credible on any level, check out how he ends his book. This is the closing argument of his long book, his long ramblings. This is the last paragraph. <laughs> okay, so far, I have 14 wood, hay, and shock stubble books on the Vatican. Gee whiz. I wonder, I love when people say gee whiz. Gee whiz. I wonder how many Father Drew has done so far himself. I am totally trusting Mary. Plus, I am resting in the Holy Spirit and I am depending on Jesus Christ. I am writing these books as I write all of my books only to the glory of God. And my goal is to reveal the church for what it is. It is a mess. 
And it is far worse than that. <laughs> you could have just skipped the met. If you think it's far worse, then why even mention the part? Not only are there a large number of men who are homosexual and pedophile, tiny child molesters, they are often also killers of little children for the devil. It is all this bad. Okay? It's all this, it's, it is all this bad. You guys, it is all this bad. And that's what the Ninth Circle uh, cult conspiracy is. It is gibberish. Everything I can find online about this cult is perpetuated by the intellectual equivalents of Randy Schock and Kevin D. Annette. It truly seems to be complete nonsense created in the minds of not real bright, paranoid conspiracy nuts. Also seems to be invented by Kevin D. Annette and posted on his blog and then other possibly mentally ill people like Randy Schock. I mean, something's wrong with that guy. Uh, added to the mythology, the, the similar claims of obvious wackadoodles like Judy Byington also woven into the backstory to provide further evidence. Uh, it is the internet whisperings of delusional maniacs. Uh, I'm going to go with Snopes.com. Put a big old, all caps, bold font, false rating on the existence of the Ninth Circle cult. The idea, though, of elite sacrificing, eating, and or fucking our children is nothing new. And historically, kids have been sacrificed, you know. So I get where some of the concern come from. So, you know, we learned about that way back in the, you know, with the Aztec times. There's kids being sacrificed. That's happened in the history of the world. Uh, we'll look at some much more credible pedophile cases because a suck on only the Ninth Circle cult just isn't quite meaty enough. And while I do make fun of this particular cult, I do understand the motivation for how people could believe it because we are going to look at examples of real horrible things that have gone on. And when you add them all up, it's like, you know, it just makes something like this seem a little more plausible. Um, without some of the cartoonish elements like the robes and stuff. And I'm going to address that too, because that just comes up all the time. And there are all these satanic cults we're going to get into. Has that even ever happened? Uh, before we explore some real pedophiles, some of which, uh, you know, seem to have been part of real pedophile rings, let's have a little more fun with the Ninth Circle cult believers and hop into an edits of the internet right after a sponsor. Time Suck is brought to you by Movement. Whether you're at the office, scrolling through your phone, unwinding from a long day, Movement's ever scroll blue light filtering glasses have you covered. They're built to protect your eyes. I wish I had them on right now. Uh, they're built to protect your eyes from blue light that's known to cause eye strain, discomfort, poor sleeping patterns. And ever scroll blue light filtering glasses started just 65 bucks. I got mine last week. I should be wearing them right now. Uh, I, I, I like with my uh, numerous, you know, movement watches, my movement sunglasses. With these new glasses, also, I just love the way they look and feel. They're just built very well, stylish. I got the Reveler. Ever scroll glasses with the black frames, solid frames, classic look, easy to clean uh, lenses. They don't, you know, refuse to let smudges or other, you know, uh, go away like some glasses do sometimes. Uh, they look like regular glasses, no yellow tint lenses like you find on, you know, uh, blue light blockers oftentimes. Pick from round frames, clear frames, colored frames, etc. Movement selection is always expanding with new traditional and fashion forward styles to choose from. So get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns. That's right, 15% off, free shipping, free returns. Go to movement.com slash time suck. That's mvmt.com slash time suck. Shop Movement Ever Scroll blue light filtering glasses. Protect your eyes. Look great doing it. So go to movement.com slash time suck. Join the movement. Link in the episode description. And now, enough talk about something smart. Let's talk about something dumb. Idiots of the internet. On February 19th, 2018, Truth Rising mm -hmm, posted a video titled Breaking, all caps, Breaking, Woman Witnesses Child Sacrifice at Vatican, 34 Mass Graves Found, Pope and Queen Involved. And then it talked, you know, there's a lot of uh, Ninth Circle cult in the description underneath. Spoiler alert, instead of 34 mass graves uh, found of children raped and murdered by pedophile cults, zero such mass graves have been found. Uh, the video has 122,000 views, just under 600 comments. And Arthur Morrison is very alarmed, posting in all caps, the military must take control and force access to these monsters and should be executed on sight without mercy. Fucking get them, Arthur. Your brain might not work too good, but your heart's in the right place. Just get those kid hunters. Yeah, 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 go, go get them. Go get them. Uh, Romney Sagma has some answers, posting, Catholic people too much adore their church leaders than God, Pope, Bishop, fathers, etc. That is why this happens mostly to them. Okay, I get it, Rami. Catholic children are being abducted, raped, hunted, killed, and then their dicks are being mounted in royal trophy rooms because God is mad at their parents. What a fun God. What a fun God to worship. 
some monster up in the sky going, Get those Catholics! God command you! Get them! Fuck their kids! Hunt them! Fuck their sons and cut their dicks off! I'll show them, I'll show them to have their mother's statue! I am I am God! This is how I do things. Uh, Helen Matthias posts, I can't read those horrific documents. Already saw Pizzagate. Awesome, Helen. Uh, you've fallen for at least two nonsensical conspiracies. Let's put you in charge of some. You seem really good at getting to the bottom of facts. Eric Sato does his best to ask an intelligent question, writing, I was wondering why this exposed video never broadcast in the news or is a block news to avoid revealing their demonic activity. Uh, <laughs> I'll answer that interestingly worded question, Eric. Uh, it's never been exposed in the news because it's fucking nonsense. <laughs> Perpetuated by easily manipulated people with the critical thinking abilities of five-year-olds. You know, you know what? Uh, forget what I said last week. Uh, I think we should stop vaccinating. I think it might be time to thin the herd out a little bit. Uh, almost every comment has likes and replies, but not impartial Ted's comment. Mm-mm. Radio silence. When he posts something a little bit logical, posting links to court docs and signed witness testimony, I can't seem to find any trace of that. <laughs> uh, listen up, Ted. We're trying to have some fun here, okay? We're trying to get good and worked up over some baseless accusations of rampant satanic molestation and murder and kid hunting, and you're taking a big old shit to whack a little punch ball, you goddamn logic fucking police! Jojo Zepp of the jungle is not surprised by the Ninth Circle cult at all. He thinks people have been hunting and fucking and eating kids since the beginning of humankind, posting, this has always went on. Went on with the Mayans, the Egyptians, the Romans. It's never stopped. What a strange thing to believe in. That people, you know, in power have just always just wanted to rape and kill kids. It's just, you know, what they do. I wonder if JoJo thinks this, uh, like, also applies to the business world. Like, basically, does, does everyone with a lot of ambition, is that why they're trying to get, you know, some extra money? It's like you just fucking eat those kids. Is that what CEOs are up to? Yeah. <laughs> what a terrible way to go through life, just looking at people with that kind of suspicion. Oh, congrats on your pizza shop, Mark. Must be nice owning a business, scrolling some money away. Uh, must be nice baking that young, sexy pizza, right? Putting your... Putting your cheese in it, uh-huh. Putting your meat in that tight young pizza. I know what you're doing, Satan's puppet. But 100 comments down, I find the first comment who seems to think this video is as dumb as I do. Giovanni Cruz posts, I saw this movie. The Purge is good. Exactly. This conspiracy would make a good movie. And I'll end on this idiot. Uh, Unhair Stylist 18 posts, your logo at the beginning made me turn this off. Looks like you are working for them, all caps. My God. Uh, the logo? they're referring to, it's the eye of providence, that Illuminati eye, which is actually Christian in origin. I've, I've talked about that before. It initially represented the eye of God watching over humanity. That's its true origin. But now so many people are so fucking paranoid and just to be really blunt, not smart. I don't know why. I don't know if they just, you know, didn't, they just chose not to pay attention in school or they just weren't starting with, with a lot of gray matter to work with in, in, in the beginning. And then they chose not to kind of beef that up at all. Uh, and they're just so conspiracy obsessed that they see satanic symbols in everything, even in Christian iconography, included in videos made by people who are on their side. Like their paranoia is leading them to turn on themselves. And I love it. they're starting to cannibalize themselves. Hopefully this continues. Hopefully they just fold in on themselves and this all this conspiracy talk on the web just devolves into just them constantly sniping and bickering at each other. The internet, holy shit, there is no shortage of scary morons out there. Idiots of the internet. 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 So now we know the Ninth Circle cult is not real, but now let's look into why certain people are able to believe it's true. Uh, I do, again, I do think a lot of people just choose to believe this stuff because they're just fucking loonies. Uh, but there is, you know, some, some basis for some of the aspects of this concern, this fear about this cult, fears of systematic underground child abuse, you know, have run throughout popular conspiracy theories for centuries. Uh, it's a thing people have believed over and over again for a long time. One of the oldest held beliefs regarding rampant pedophilia and rings of pedophilia is, uh, you know, about the Jewish people uh, that, you know, all, all of them, you know, uh, want, want to do this, murdering Christian children, drinking their blood. We've touched on this several times in previous sucks. You know, there's, there's stories that run back deep into the dark ages but a lot of Christians being very scared about what the Jewish people are up to with their kids. Uh, you know, documentation going back at least as far as the 12th century, if not far earlier. Lots of examples of Jewish people being accused, killed over baseless accusations, you know, over things 
uh, like satanic child sacrifice. And, and why does this happen? Well, because Christianity, time and time again, has demonized the Jewish people as being the killers of Christ. And I know, I know, the overwhelming majority of Christians do not, you know, push that kind of worldview. They don't focus on that. It, it's an overly vocal minority who spread this incredibly ignorant, stupid hate. 2,000 years later, this shit's still going on in a lot of backwoods, fringe Christian circles. Just last week, Jewish comedian Sarah Silverman was, was addressing death, re, death threats on social media. And she's been receiving death threats because a Florida pastor called for her death because she's Jewish. In a video that I watched of Pastor Adam Fannin of the Steadfast Baptist Church, he just recently, you know, in, in Florida, uh, said on video, you know these Jewish false prophets, anti-Christian, anti-God, they're willing to put Jesus to death again. You heard this comedian, Sarah Silverman? Listen, she is a witch. She is a Jezebel. She is a God-hating whore of Zionism. I hope that God breaks her teeth out and she dies. She is a wicked person. She is like the perfect representation of religious Judaism. She is Satan's scoffer. She is there to take the world and make them laugh and then diss Jesus, try to take away the respect from Jesus. Hey, Adam, how about you fucking kill yourself? Fuck you, Adam Fannin, you piece of shit masquerading as a man of God. Fuck, I hate you people so much. My least favorite people on earth. Those who pretend to be holier than thou and, and you just want to fucking put other people to death because they have different belief systems than you that aren't getting anybody hurt. Yeah, I want to put pedophiles to death because they're fucking predators. <laughs> and you're a predator. You're a predator, Adam. My God, man. God, that shit fires me up. Uh, and, the, and these accusations, by the way, about Jewish people, uh, you know, and it being, you know, these evil, satanic, you know, uh, influenced, horrible people trying to like do horrible things to kids, never been proven to be true. How crazy is that? Try to find one example of a Jewish pedophile ring. You won't because there hasn't been one fucking ever. Not one time. There have been Jewish pedophiles. There has never been a Jewish pedophile ring. And there has certainly never been a Jewish satanic pedophile ring. There's never been a satanic pedophile ring, ever. I'm going to address that later. This stuff, But it's rampant on the internet. These claims of this shit. Uh, yeah, ironically, no one has done more evil shit to Christian kids than Christians themselves. And that's not a knock on Christianity, but it is the truth. Right? See Catholic Church pedophile scandals. See the people running the Catholic Church. They have fucked more kids than any supposed Satanists. In the 1980s, as we discussed in a few previous sucks, especially the Mandela Effect Suck 31, America was gripped by another satanic panic. And these satanic panics have gone on since like the first century CE. Uh, parents became convinced that their day case centers, such as the McMartin Preschool in Manhattan Beach, California, filled with Satanists. Always this, it's always the same story. Filled with Satanists, ritually uh, abusing their children. Uh, there were allegations in the McMartin trial of children being sodomized in secret underground tunnels. Their captors drank blood in front of them and staged satanic ritual sacrifices. Witches literally flew around on literal brooms. Kids were flushed down fake toilets into underground fuck dungeons. I mean, this shit was talked about in court by grownups taking it seriously because they're fucking, in certain ways, morons. Superstitious morons. That trial was a modern-day Salem witch hunt. No evidence of anything. Ruined a lot of lives. Uh, you know, uh, some paranoid investigators creating false memories, harming innocent kids psychologically, putting a lot of innocent people in prison. You know, people who had their careers destroyed. The 1999 film Eyes Wide Shut, that depicts a fictional secret society, right? Conducting a cult-like sexual ceremony. Spawned, that spawned fevered speculation that, you know, that the director, Stanley Kubrick, was just, you know, trying to expose some real stuff going on. Right? He's just alluding to like people cite that movie now as an example of like, huh? They're they're showing you what goes on. Uh, Anna Merlin, the author of Republic of Lies, American conspiracy theorists and their surprising rise to power, she says that allegations of pedophilia are central to some of the most widely circulated conspiracy theories on the internet today, which they are. Uh, and she attributes this in part to the simple horror of the crime. If someone is abusing children, there is no worse of a thing to be. She also adds that conspiracists tend to weave their narratives in ways that conveniently implicate their political enemies while sparing their allies, which I find hilarious, right? It's funny how people, um, like uh, with Epstein, this recent thing, a lot of memes going around uh, by people on the left, you know, uh, acting like Trump was clearly behind it. And then a, a lot of other memes by people on the right acting like the Clintons 
behind it. You know, even though both Trump and Clinton spend a lot of time with Epstein. So it's funny how somebody who's conservative can be like, ah, fucking Clintons. It's like, no, 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 no. Trump also tied just as closely to Epstein. And then same thing, people on the left being like, ha ah, Trump, he, fucking, he was his friend, as was many liberals. As it's, uh, yeah. People are just, uh, they see what they want to see a lot of times. If, if, if you're going to throw out guilty by association, then you got to throw out all associates, not just the ones who aren't in your political team. Uh, Merlin also adds conspiracy theories are, aren't based on nothing, right? Saying that with every new pedophile arrest, with every new Me Too allegation, convictions deepen amongst the true believers. Saying any sort of sexual abuse scandal that involves powerful people is taken as proof of their basic thesis. It's sort of a sad reality that the world is so full of rape and sexual abuse and predation of women and children that it's possible to think this is real. Uh, again, the Jeffrey Epstein case, good example of something really horrible that seems to be entirely true, as we'll see in a bit. And then the reality of like the Epstein case will give fuel to fake stories like the Ninth Circle cult. Uh, so let's look into some real evil shit that makes other not real evil shit seem way too plausible. Things that allow the imaginations uh, uh, of others to ramp up to ninth circle cult levels. We'll start by taking a peek at some of the worst pedophiles who have ever walked the earth. Boy, uh, woof. Earl Bradley, first up. This guy, I think top five. Just a little snippet about him here, but top five rage level uh, out of everyone we talked about talking about this guy. Get ready for your skin to crawl. Get ready to want to punch holes in the walls around you. Earl Bradley is considered by many to be the worst pedophile in American history. After what I've read about him, I, I have to agree. Earl Brian Bradley, former pediatrician from Lowe's, or Lowe's, Delaware, convicted serial child molester, terrifying example of evil hiding in plain sight. And while he wasn't part of a pedophile ring or a member of some kind of cult, what he did was so fucking evil. I, I could see how others could use the reality of what he did to justify suspicions of others organizing to do more of the same. Earl Bradley was indicted in 2010 on 471 charges of molesting, raping, and exploiting 103 child patients, 102 girls, one boy. <sighs> Some of the victims were as young as three months old. Yeah. And the real victim count likely much, much higher. Bradley is thought to have molested over 1,200 children before he went to jail in 2009. <sighs> in one instance, 15 years before his arrest, Dr. Bradley was caught in the act but still got away with it. What the hell are you doing, you bastard? His patient's mother screamed when she found Bradley with his hand in her daughter's diaper in the process of molesting her. Trailing the mother to the parking lot, Bradley insists that she hadn't seen what she thought she saw. The police were called. Bradley had been literally caught in the act, but did not get in trouble. Bradley told the police that the mother, who was poor, young, and unwed, was trying to extort money from him. And the lie worked. A detective wrote that compared to the doctor, the mother was not credible. A medical board investigator found that Bradley specialized in welfare patients, so a shakedown was a distinct possibility. The case was closed. The son of a bitch, man, preyed on the poor. Uh, the doctor went on to become one of the nation's most prolific sexual predators for 15 more years. Earl Bradley raped, molested, sodomized a generation of pediatric patients along the Delaware seashore. He recorded 13 hours, I mean, that were found, 13 hours of assaults on video. And this is even tougher to hear than everything I've said so far. Some of the assaults so violent, he had to resuscitate the victims to continue because they would lose consciousness and he would wake them back up to continue to sexually assault them. And this happened while their parents waited in the lobby for their child to be done with a doctor's visit. This motherfucker. I, I know I sound crazy sometimes when I say this. If you gave, if, if I wasn't going to go to jail for doing it, I would curb stomp him to death today. If they, were, if they would let me in the cell to just stomp his fucking skull into oblivion, I swear to God I would do that and have a fucking smile on my face. This piece of shit, currently incarcerated, the uh, Cheshire Correctional Institution in Cheshire, Connecticut, any time suckers currently incarcerated there, if you, you know, happen to accidentally brutally murder this pile of walking garbage, please send in a time sucker update so I can read about your heroism uh, and share it with the world. It'd be pretty fun to hear about how he accidentally Slipped in the shower, fell on a knife that somehow cut his dick off, and then got accidentally jammed up his ass, and then he bled out and died. What a terrible accident that would be. And I had to stop looking into court details in this guy, because it just it makes me want to scream with rage and also cry and feel sick. Earl Bradley, living monster, truly hope he dies, suffering some of the pain he inflicted on his many victims. Real example of doing something, you know, almost as evil as what the fake members of the fake Ninth Circle cult were accused of. Next on the list of subhuman garbage is one of the UK's worst, pe worst pedophiles, Richard Huckle. Richard William Huckle was convicted of 71 counts of serious sexual assaults against children while posing as a teacher, 
photographer and devout Christian in Malaysia, believed that he molested somewhere near 200 Malaysian children. Huckle has been described as one of Britain's worst ever pedophiles, despite being only 28 years old at the time of his arrest. On June 6, 2016, he was given 22 life sentences with a minimum prison term of 25 years before being eligible to apply for parole. How the fuck does someone get 22 life sentences and then become eligible for parole in 25 years? Why, why is the possibility of parole ever given to a dirtbag who, who, who's done so much damage? This fake Christian posed as an English teacher uh, doing good deeds to gain access to children from poor, real Christian families. After being caught, Huckle expressed remorse for his horrific actions, or at least pretended to, saying, I don't want to become a martyr to sex tourism in Malaysia. This was all my doing as a consequence of my own immaturities. I- immaturities? Excuse me? Sorry, what was that? Immaturities? Is that is that what it was? Uh, since was since when was being immature synonymous with kid fucking? Uh, Huckle said in his letter to the court he had completely misjudged the affections I received from this children. Ah, oh, he's not a bad guy. He just has a hard time reading the room. You know, he's just misjudged. He's misunderstanding. He 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 thought a young kid glancing at him from across the room while playing with some toys on the floor meant that kid wanted his dick in his butt. It was just a misunderstanding. I hope that guy dies too. Uh, Huckle added that he was influenced by pathetic, perverted lust of those who drew me into the dark net. Ah, it wasn't his fault. You know, it's bad influences. And another example here of giving credibility to, to the existence of pedophile rings, right? He was, he was lured into this by some mysterious others. He was taken in by an underground network of perverts, which I do believe exists, by the way. I just don't think they exist in a robe-wearing, let's drink kids' blood and chant to Satan kind of way. Uh, more of a loose connection of greasy-haired basement dwellers, and to be fair, also totally normal-looking people, the scariest ones of all to me, who want to fuck kids and take pictures and videos of doing that and then, you know, share them with other perverts on the, on the dark web. Uh, I do think that type of thing exists because, you know, there's arrest examples to, to back that up. Uh, to make this guy that much more hateable, also evidence that Huckle wrote a pedophile manual <sighs> titled uh, Pedophiles in Poverty, Child Lover Guide, as well as Pedo Points Ledger, which he details rapes and various sexual acts. He admitted to 71 child sex offenses, including multiple rapes against 23 identified children aged between six months and 12 years old. <sighs> yeah, six months, man. Blah. Staying in England. We're almost done with this. Speaking to the supposed famous members of the Ninth Circle conspiracy, right? Because it's all about people in power, the elites. One of the most famous pedophiles in the world was British TV personality Jimmy Seville. Jimmy Seville sexually abused hundreds of children and women at the height of his fame and did so over the course of six decades. And he did it despite being extremely well known to the British public. Uh, For American listeners, this would be the equivalent of Dick Clark from American Bandstand being outed as a sex criminal or, you know, um, you know, Pat Pat Sajak, who is not a pedophile. No allegations at all against Mr. Sajak ever, to be very clear. He seems nothing less than a fine, upstanding citizen. Investigators believe that the longtime BBC host and radio personality who hosted the enormously popular long-running music show Top of the Pops for over 20 years preyed on around 500 vulnerable victims as young as two years old. What the? Uh, Institutions including children who came to visit the BBC's broadcast studios, 14 hospitals, 20 children's hospitals across England, and he got away with it. He died on October 21st, 2011 at the age of 84, died a free man. Most of the investigations into his pedophilia came after his death. 450 alleged victims ended up contacting the police in the 10 weeks Right after the investigation was launched, after his death, UK police described the alleged abuse as abuse on an unprecedented scale and the number of potential victims as staggering. Because of Seville's fame and the alleged protection he received from the BBC, his story adds fuel to legends like the Ninth Circle Cult Conspiracy. I mean, after all, Seville did hang around the royal family. He reportedly spent holidays with the Thatchers, was knighted by Queen Elizabeth, uh, even given a papal knighthood by Pope John Paul II. And there have been many other famous folks who have been caught and prosecuted for sex crimes. Here's a few examples of those. Uh, remember Jared Fogle, the Subway sandwich spokesman in the early 2000s? I used to see that goofy fuck on TV every day. He, he was uh, to the Subway, $5 footlongs, what O.J. Simpson was to Hertz Rent-A-Car commercials. In 2015, law enforcement agents raided his home as part of a child pornography investigation. Then in August of 2015, Fogel pled guilty to possessing and distributing child pornography and crossing state lines to pay for sex acts with at least two teenage girls. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison, won't be eligible for parole until 2028, which is way too soon. I don't like these because based on, you know, studies of pedophiles, he's probably going to reoffend when he gets out. He's only going to be 51 when he's released. He's still going to have plenty of boners to work with. 
what do you think he's going to want to do with those boners? Uh, sexual videos with children as young as six years old were found on his hard drive. Six years old. Also, in a series of text messages that were subpoenaed for his trial, he talked about sexually abusing children ranging in age from 9 to 16. Also texted someone that he would pay big if they could bring him 14-year-old girls. Texted that he was sexually interested in young boys. Texted that he also craved underage Asian girls. I hope for the sake of sparing potential future victims pain, he dies before his release. Or maybe a little bit better, dies like right as he's walking out. You know, so he can serve his full term. Another famous shit machine, recently in the news for multiple sexual abuse allegations that have supposedly gone on for years, is R. Kelly. 1994, Robert Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly, married now-deceased R&B star uh, Al- Alaya. Uh, I, sorry, I'm messing up her name. I, I thought I had it. Now, now I don't. Uh, A-A-L-I-Y-A-H. Not somebody that I don't, I, don't, I don't think she's on my Spotify playlist right now. A falsified Cook County marriage certificate listed her age as 18, but she was only 15 at the time. I did look into the uh, the details on that, f- dug up the uh, marriage certificate, which is, yeah, easily accessible online. R. Kelly was 27. And while the age gap wouldn't have been frowned upon in like 1894, very taboo in 1994. R. Kelly seems to like him young. Between 1996, 2002, Kelly was sued by three women claiming he had sex with them when they were underage, by another woman claiming she was unknowingly videotaped while having sex with Kelly. Since then, an unspecified number of women have threatened to file similar lawsuits. In 2003, a videotape was leaked to the Chicago Sun-Times, which allegedly showed Kelly having sex with an underage girl. That video was sent to the police, and Kelly was indicted on 21 counts of making child pornography, each count for a specified sexual act depicted in the tape. Kelly's indictment was reduced to 14 counts. Uh, One of the sexual acts, uh, by the way, pissing on a girl's face. How fucked up is that? Uh, When you read about this indictment, you don't get the feeling that she she wanted to be pissed on. Uh, You get the feeling that R. Kelly enjoys sexually degrading young women. In 2008, Kelly was found not guilty on all counts. Jurors said that they were certain that Kelly was the man in the tape, but they just couldn't verify that the woman in the tape was underage. And now R. Kelly is back in court, accused of racketeering and the sexual exploitation of children. He's been hit with well over 20 different charges in uh, Minneapolis, Chicago, and Brooklyn. He's allegedly sexually exploited at least five underage girls and women since January 1999, uh, yeah, 1999, in Illinois, California, New York, Connecticut, and other locations. He uh, allegedly made these girls call him daddy and didn't give them permission to leave their rooms without his say-so. Never gave a shit about his music before all this came out. I certainly will not be listening now. Next on the list of shitlords uh, that you know are well-known, that have done horrible things, or at least been accused by a lot of people of doing horrible things, director Roman Polanski. Now, Roman Polanski, the Oscar-winning director behind Rosemary's Baby and The Pianist, is what you might call the poster child of celebrity sex offenders. In 77, Polanski was arrested and charged with statutory rape, sodomy, and child molestation after allegedly drugging and having sexual relations with a 13-year-old girl. He was 43. I want to repeat that for any fans of his movies. When he was 43, he drugged and anally raped a 13-year-old. He would charge with rape by use of drugs, perversion, sodomy, lewd and lascivious acts upon a child under 14, and furnishing a controlled substance to a minor. And he did not get in any trouble because after showing up in court, prosecutors looked at his birth certificate and did realize that he's Polish. And we do know that Polish people can't be held responsible for crimes they commit because they're just not intellectually capable of understanding concepts like morals and laws. Uh, And I do get that. I mean, putting a Polish person in prison, it doesn't make any more sense than like putting a dog or like a gerbil or like a goldfish in prison because intellectually, you know, kind of the same. Uh, And I am kidding new listener. I just like uh, taking random shots at my wife's people. The Poles. No, Roman took a plea deal, pled guilty to unlawful sexual intercourse with a binder. Under the terms of the plea agreement, the court ordered Plansky to report to a state prison for a 90-day psychiatric evaluation to determine if he should receive prison time or be given outpatient rehabilitation. He was released after 42 days. And then while a uh, judge was evaluating whether or not he, he should be sent to prison, some photos surfaced of Roman at Oktoberfest in Germany with his uh, arms around some girls in a flirtatious way. And those girls appeared to be very, very young. When Roman heard he might get prison time now because his upcoming hearing based on these photos and what the judge was thinking, he buys a one-way ticket to England He flees to France, a country where he holds citizenship, a country that can refuse to extradite citizens to the U.S., and he's been living free and hiding out in Europe ever since. And and I don't think he feels too bad about what he did, if you're still a fan of this guy. Check this out. 
1979, Polanski gave a controversial interview with novelist Martin Amis, in which, discussing his conviction, he says, If I had killed somebody, it wouldn't have had so much appeal to the press, you see. But fucking, you see, and the young girls. Judges want to fuck young girls. Juries want to fuck young girls. Everyone wants to fuck young girls. This is a quote from this guy from 1979. Uh, way to rationalize, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did it. Fucking course. I did what any man would have done. You know, uh, if they would have been able to lure her into the hot tub and give her some quaaludes. And what, you're going to try and demonize me? Come on. We all know that every dude slows down when they cruise by a medical, middle school to check out all that hot, sexy, young puss. That's not criminal. That's just bros being bros. I mean, come on. Come on. Like every guy in here doesn't jerk off in the bushes in the city park when some sexy ass junior hires walk by after band practice. Police. I think we can all agree that every 40-something-year-old dude wants to motorboat some fresh-out-the-box junior high titties. If there's grass on the field, am I right? Come on, guy. Oh, towel. Anyone? Anyone? No? Okay. Fucking son of a bitch. That's going to be fun when someone pulls that audio out of uh, context. Dan Cummins, member of the Ninth Circle cult hiding in plain sight uh, to help provide additional understanding regarding how someone could believe in something like the Ninth Circle cult. Let's look into some uh, actual pedophile rings. One example is the case of boylover.net. Back in 2011, a massive internet pedophile ring with up to 70,000 online members was busted by numerous law enforcement agencies working together. The bust was part of Operation Rescue. It identified 670 suspects and 230 abused children in over 30 countries. 184 people were arrested. That really happened. Unfortunately, this now gets portrayed fictitiously online. Now, the story is presented as if it's happening, as if it's it just going on. The operation is still going on. Uh, the suspects are incorrectly identified as global elites. There's, you know, uh, rumors of satanic overtones, which there wasn't. And the investigation is listed as ongoing, which it is not. No, it's just a, it's just a bunch of regular old pervs sharing naked photos of kids online and they got caught. They weren't European royals. No baby's blood was being drank. No one was sacrificed to the devil. Uh, Operation Rescue was a joint effort involving the European Un Union Agency for Law Enforcement Cooperation, Europol, and law enforcement in 13 different countries, initiated in 2007, ended in 2011. Another online pedo ring was busted just this past May. 50 children were rescued. Nine people were arrested in Thailand, Australia, and the U.S. after an Interpol investigation that began in 2017, 2017, excuse me, uh, concluded in May. Now, the investigation focused on a hidden dark website with 63,000 online users, way too many creeps. Operation Blackwrist was launched by Interpol after detected images showing 11 different boys aged under 13 being abused on a site where people could use encrypted software to maintain secrecy and watch. Also, uh, Operation Blackwrist. Seriously? That's some kind of jerk-off reference? Uh, but yeah, so that, that was busted. Uh, Pizzagate, another example of a pedophile ring being, uh, you know, uh, busted, except it wasn't busted because it wasn't real. That's actually an example of a, of a fake pedophile ring. If you don't believe me, go back and listen to Time Suck 64. Did an entire suck on Pizzagate. It's no more credible than the Ninth Circle cult. It's really not. Uh, while Pizzagate and the Ninth Circle cult are not real, sex trafficking is real, right? And, and, and you can bet there are rings of sex traffickers in the sense that some groups of people are working together to kidnap other people, including kids sell them to other groups who sexually exploit them for profit. No robes, no promises made to the Dark Lord, but still very disturbing. Here are some disturbing sex trafficking stats. In September 2017, the International Labor, Labor Organization, ILO, estimated that 24.9 million men, women, and children were the victims of human trafficking around the globe. 25 million in a year. While trafficking victims can be individuals of both genders, the majority of victims are women and girls. And according to data from the UN, 51% of victims are women, while another 20% are girls, accounting for 71% of victims. Uh, also, according to the UN's uh, Office on Drugs and Crimes 2016 Global Report on Trafficking, 54% of all trafficking victims in 2014 were trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation. So when you kind of combine that with the 2017 numbers, you can get like a rough estimate of, you know, 12, 13 uh, million meat sacks, mostly women and girls, you know, being sex trafficked just in one year. Although there are no other official numbers or estimates regarding the number of human trafficking victims in the U.S., Polaris, a nonprofit working to combat modern-day slavery and human trafficking, says they saw a 13% jump in identified cases from 2016 to 2017, and this organization believes the overall number of human trafficking victims in just the U.S. is in the hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. 
And with all these cases, for sure, comes different type, uh, different types of sex rings. And we can spend hours talking about them all. That's not necessary to illustrate the point that irrational fears regarding fictitious child pred- predators are likely at least partially based on real examples of lots of child predators. Uh, so let, let's now look at two final examples of real groups of people engaged in widespread pedophilia. The first will be the Catholic Church because no giant organization has come even close to producing as many pedophilia arrests as a Catholic Church. After that, we'll look at current news stories, uh, you know, uh, generating a significant amount of concern about uh, pedo rings. All these news stories, uh, you know, talking about the case of Jeffrey Epstein. We'll do a little time suck timeline on each of those. Before we examine the history of the Catholic Church's own priests and atrocities towards children, let's start by illustrating just how powerful the Catholic Church is. Because this, you know, stokes fears of a powerful organization hiding people and doing horrible things to kids. Because that that is what happened. Uh, maybe this is why the Pope and the Jesuits are woven into the ninth circle cult lore, right? Uh, the Catholic Church, huge, powerful, kind of secret, lots of rituals, definitely had lots of pedophiles in the ranks. Uh, it's impossible to tell how just how wealthy the Catholic Church is. Uh, the organization is just too big, too old, too spread out around the globe. Their finances are too hidden. But an article in Times Magazine that came out way back in 1965 said that after, you know, journalists did some investigating, the Vatican's wealth was thought to be somewhere between 10 and 15 billion. And that would be equivalent to anywhere from 80 to $120 billion today. And that's basing, you know, the increase in value just using an inflation calculator. But since a lot of their wealth has been tied up in, you know, some of the best real estate in the world, and the price of property has grown faster than the rate of inflation in much of the world, I mean, their true value as a worldwide organization could be considerably higher than $120 billion. So it's safe to say they're fucking loaded. I mean, that amount of wealth could theoretically pay for covering up a lot of terrible things. Uh, According to Forbes magazine, Pope Francis is considered the sixth most powerful person in the world. The human voice of the Catholic God, you know, ranks, uh, you know, uh, right up there with leaders of China, Russia, the U.S., Germany, Jeff Bezos of Amazon. The Catholic Church is very powerful. Makes sense that people would worry about the Pope. Historically, a lot of very powerful people have done terrible things. Historically, the Catholic Church has done a lot of terrible things. Uh, Yeah, so I, I can see how, you know, stories that come out about the Catholic Church can feed into the Ninth Circle lore. Let's take a look at the history of pedophile priests in today's first time suck timeline. Uh, but keep in mind, as we go through here, that many, many instances of abuse, uh, you know, despite all these instances, the vast majority of priests, I, I feel obligated to point out, have never been accused of being pedophiles. So to be fair to the Catholic Church. Okay, now let's get into this timeline after a word from today's final sponsor. What's the easiest way to ease back into a routine? Enjoy it. Look forward to it. Have it be easy with Quip. Brushing your teeth feels uh, not like a chore. Feels like a, like a trip to a magical mouth spa where some oral angel caresses your gums and shines up your chumps. Time Suck is brought to you by Quip. Simplify mornings and evenings with an electric toothbrush from Quip. It's timed sonic vibrations offer an effective clean that's gentle on your sensitive gums just two minutes twice a day. And the multi-use cover works as a stand and mounts to mirrors putting, uh, you know, brushing front and center in your bathroom. Better yet, the lightweight, compact design means you can bring it along with you on those last summer weekend getaways. And brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just five bucks, making it easy to stay committed to your oral health. I love how easy it is to travel with my quip because I travel a ton, as you know. No big old charging station to have to pack into my toiletry bag. I don't have to plug anything in. I just, you know, put the toothbrush in my mouth with a fresh brush head on it. And I get to brush it with some bristles that soothe my gums instead of sandpapering them down to the roots of my teeth. I love Quip and why it's perfect for getting back into a routine is Quip starts at just 25 bucks. And if you go to getquip.com slash timesuck right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack for free. Getquip.com, that's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash timesuck. Link in the episode description. First of two timelines, right now. Strap on those boots, soldier. We're marching down a time suck timeline. In his book, Sex, Priests, and Secret Codes, Reverend Tom Doyle traces the history of clergy sexual abuse of children all the way back to 98 AD. Maybe it happened back then, maybe it didn't. Uh, Doyle doesn't give a lot of any real details about that first alleged incident, but there are a lot of details about much more recent incidents. 1947, the servants of the par, uh, Paraclete opens in Jemez Springs, New Mexico as a treatment center for priests accused of molesting children. 
founded by Reverend Gerald Fitzgerald, which is a great name. Gerald Fitzgerald, that's almost as bad as Donald McDonald. Uh, and that's when you know your organization has a real problem, by the way. When you have a full-time retreat center set up specifically for child molesters. I, I wish I could have chosen how to decorate and run that retreat and train its employees. Right in the lobby, I would have had a big old welcome sign. You know, like right when you walk in, just, welcome dirtbags. Please stop fucking kids. It's very wrong. And then I'd have every employee work in their train to reinforce that message. Like, you know, like when they checked in, the front desk clerk would be like, uh, let me get a key for your room. Uh, 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 just one key, correct? I mean, you should only need one key since no one else is, uh, you know, listed on your reservation, especially not any kids that you'd probably try and fuck if they were, right? I mean, that's, that's correct. Just one key. Uh, just one key for you that, you that you're not going to use, to be clear, to bring kids back to your room to fuck, are you? Just want to make sure that you're aware that that's very wrong. It's not okay to do on any level. And then when those guys, when those priests would go to like a restaurant, you know, I'd have the waiter say stuff like, um, would you like to hear about today's specials? Our soup today is a nice clam chowder. It's made fresh from scratch. And during the cooking process, not a single kid is fucked or molested. Isn't that nice? Uh, don't you think that's a good way to make chowder without fucking and molesting kids? We also have a nice filet mignon on the menu that has never touched a little boy's balls or butthole. Don't you think that's a nice way to prepare a steak by not letting it touch a little boy's uh, buttholes or balls? Uh, those things probably shouldn't be touched, you know, by our, by our chefs or by, or by you priests, don't, don't you think? It's very wrong. No, I'm just kidding. I, I wouldn't have anybody trained to do that. If I was in charge, uh, they would just walk in and there'd be a trap door and they would just fall into a fucking pit of ferocious animals. <laughs> right? Uh, welcome, kid day learning. <laughs> just fucking eating. Next problem. 1984. Reverend Gilbert Goth, a priest in the Diocese of Lafayette, Louisiana, is indicted on 34 counts of sex crimes against children. He's the first priest in the U.S. to face a criminal trial for child sexual abuse. In October 86, he pleads guilty, sentenced to 20 years in prison, ultimately serving only nine years. That's fucked up. 34 kids, right, you, you mess with and you get nine years, and yet there's still people in prison, you know, uh, for life in some instances, for doing shit like related to like weed, to marijuana distribution. It's bullshit. Uh, June of 1985, Reverend Thomas Doyle, Goss attorney Ray Moulton, released a report called The Problem of Sexual Molestation by Roman Catholic Clergy, meeting the problem in a comprehensive and responsible manner. In the report, Doyle warns bish bishops of the dangers that exist in the church and outlines how sexual abuse allegations should be handled. Doyle said that church leaders dismissed his report, told him they already knew everything uh, and that they were already, you know, uh, had some policies in place for dealing with sexual abuse. Policies that clearly were not working. I think their policy was just to like ignore it and hide it. In July 1997, a Dallas jury awarded a landmark $119 million judgment against the Catholic Church, the largest ever, to 11 survivors of clergy sexual abuse. After the trial, attorney Sylvia Damara says, I hope this wakes up the Pope. It doesn't. The Pope responded uh, with an official statement, just writing, worth it. 10 out of 10 would fuck again. So not cool, you know? That would be seriously not cool if that happened. Can, can you imagine the outrage if, uh, you know, like there was allegate, like with modern allegations, if uh, people are tweeting the Pope and he just tweets back, worth it. Uh, January 2002, the Boston Globe releases a groundbreaking story that the church allowed a Boston priest known for molesting boys to transfer in and out of parishes where he continued to molest more boys rather than remove him from the ministry. So fucked up. They knew they knew who he was, what he was doing, and just let him continue to be a predator. Some shepherds, some shepherds, those Boston area bishops were, ah. June of 2002, after meeting in Dallas, Texas, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops establishes the Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People, commonly known as the Dallas Charter, which calls for zero tolerance for priests who sexually abuse children. It does not, however, address Catholic bishops who cover up cases or uh, allow abusive priests to continue in ministry, which was a serious problem. In March of 2009, New Hampshire named 27 priests accused of abuse after the Attorney General's office completed a five-year audit of the Diocese of Manchester. My God. Pope Francis meets with clergy of sexual abuse survivors and promises zero tolerance for priests who abuse children in July of 2014. The movie Spotlight is released in, the, in September of 2015. The award-winning film follows how the Boston Globe's investigative spotlight team uncovered the Catholic Church hiding sexual abuse within the Archdiocese or Diocese of Boston. I, I did see that movie. Powerful, excellent movie. Would not change a thing about it. Three out of five stars. Uh, one of the broadest inquiries into clergy sexual abuse in U.S. history uh, happened in August 2018. A Pennsylvania grand jury released a report concluding that 300 Pennsylvania Catholic priests sexually abused over 1,000 child victims over seven decades. 
It's just, it was rent, it was epidemic. Uh, in December of 2018, Pope Francis calls for all priests who have raped and molested children to turn themselves in. Right. I'm sure that, I'm sure that really helped. Uh, hey guys, stop it and tell us who you are. That always works. Uh, the Pope promises the church will never again cover up clergy sexual abuse. And then a picture reveals that his fingers are crossed behind his back when he said that, you know? And of course, that's not true, but I, I don't believe him. Pure speculation, but I think the Catholic Church probably still is hiding some pedophiles. There's, there's too much money to lose when they get caught. The lawsuits are too big. Still in December of 2018, the Illinois Attorney General releases preliminary findings in an investigation that revealed the state's six dioceses, ah, I think that's how you say that, uh, failed to disclose sexual abuse allegations against 500 additional priests and clergy members. In January of 2019, U.S. Catholic bishops gather in Illinois for a week-long retreat of prayer and reflection related to the clergy sexual abuse crisis. That's, that's cute, guys. That's sweet. But uh, I don't think you get to, get to pray kid fuckers away. I'm pretty sure execution works. Uh, but, you know, I don't think prayer does. Hard to stick anything into kids anywhere if you're dead. But I don't, I don't think anyone has ever been about to molest a kid. And then they're just like, nah. And then, you know, turns out somebody was, was praying for them to not do that. Uh, February 2019, the world's Catholic bishops gather in the Vatican with the Pope to discuss preventing priest sex abuse. They collectively decide that, you know, it's bad. And they should probably call the police when you find a creep. Good job, guys. Good. Way to brainstorm. Way to solve that super not complicated problem. And that is it for the first timeline of today. Good job, soldier. You've made it back. Barely. So yeah, a lot of, lot of kitty fiddling and diddling amongst the uh, supposed to be uh, supposed to be celibate priests of the Catholic Church. Again, most priests, you know, don't seem to be interested in fucking kids at all. But a lot of priests have abused their position of trust, have been protected by the church, which then makes the belief in, you know, the possibility of secretive groups of pedophiles not seem so crazy because there is a, a precedent. Uh, although a lot of information is hidden, um, sealed in various records and court documents around the world. Here's a few estimates of the damage caused collectively by the church's leaders. There are over 410,000 Catholic priests around the world, according to the Catholic News Service. A church commission report in 2004 said more than 4,000 U.S. Roman Catholic priests had faced sexual abuse allegations in the last 50 years in cases involving more than 10,000 children, mostly boys. A 2009 report found that sexual and psychological abuse was endemic in Catholic-run industrial schools and orphanages ugh, in Ireland for most of the 20th century. Now, how extra sad, man. Some poor kid in an orphanage already, you know, doesn't have parents in the world and then just get molested by somebody who's supposed to be giving him spiritual guidance. Uh, a five-year Australian inquiry in 2017 found that tens of thousands of children were sexually abused in Australian institutions over decades, including churches, schools, and sports clubs. Uh, finally, the church has paid out more than $3 billion so far to settle sexual abuse claims. That's a lot of sexual abuse. Okay, now let's talk about another possibly, if not probably, very real pedophile ring, the one that orbited around the late Jeffrey Epstein. His life may have ended just over a week ago on August 10th, but his story is far from over, still unraveling, probably will continue to unravel for quite some time. Again, not, not a tale of dudes in cloaks sacrificing anyone to uh, Satan or drinking baby's blood, but a super rich, slimy dude taking other dudes, rich and powerful dudes, you know, uh, on, on the, you know, jet, jet trips where they're fucking teen girls on the plane or, or fucking them on his private island and then using evidence of these uh, illegal acts. These dudes are just committed to leverage financial opportunities for himself. You know, if all of this has happened, which it seems to have, ha have happened, pretty evil. Not quite the horror movie tale that the Ninth Circle cult is, but still real bad. And we're going to do a, a time suck timeline, a timeline on Epstein as well. After we spend a little time kind of laying out some non-chronological Epstein info. Uh, who was he? Uh, Epstein started his career in New York City as a math teacher at the elite Dalton School. But in the 1970s, he went to work with investment banker uh, Bear Stearns before founding his own firm, uh, J. Epstein & Co. in 1982. According to Vox, he specifically marketed his services to those with assets worth more than a billion dollars. So, you know, global elite. Operated his company out of the U.S. Virgin Islands for tax reasons. In 2018, Epstein pleaded guilty to a felony charge of solicitation of prostitution involving a minor. Was sentenced to 18 months in prison, served only 13, granted work release, which allowed him to commute to an office outside the jail six days a week. He did have to register as a sex offender. But since this, you know, motherfucker owned his own island, it's not like he had to notify neighbors, you know, about who he was. In addition to being a pedophile, Epstein was also a philanthropist, which put him in regular, favorable contact with a variety of 
powerful and influential people, global elites. Uh, one of the many causes to which Epstein donated, uh, you know, um, or of, excuse me, of the many causes to which Epstein donated, academic scientists were a notable group. The New York Times reported that he apparently dangled financing for their pet projects in front of them, attracted a distinguished group of acquaintances, including several Nobel laureates, to his home for parties and to scientific conferences that he sponsored. Also allegedly pressured a variety of underage girls to sleep with many of these scientists. Who else hung out with Epstein? A lot of politicians. Epstein associated with politicians on both sides of the aisle. I want to hit that note again. Both sides. Uh, come from somebody standing in the middle. Uh, you know, including presidents Bill Clinton and Donald Trump, to name just two. I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy, Trump told New York Magazine in 2002. He's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. Okay. Uh, following the news of his recent arrest, Trump said he has distanced himself with Epstein in recent years, saying, I had a falling out with him. I haven't spoken to him in 15 years. I was not a fan of his. That I can tell you. There are reports that President Trump banned Epstein from one or all of his clubs following his conviction back in 2008. Former President Bill Clinton issued a public statement recently acknowledging that he has ridden on Epstein's private plane, but that he was unaware of Epstein's criminal activity. As a, a, a Clinton spokesperson said, President Clinton knows nothing about the terrible crimes Jeffrey Epstein pleaded guilty to in Florida some years ago or those with which he has been recently charged in New York. In 2002 and 2003, President Clinton took a total of four trips on Jeffrey Epstein's airplane, one to Europe, one to Asia, and two to Africa, which included stops in connection with the work of the Clinton Foundation. There are some conspiracy theorists claiming now that Trump had Epstein killed to keep from getting named by Epstein as a pedophile, and a lot more conspiracy theorists claiming that the Clintons had Epstein killed to keep him from naming Bill or Bill and Hillary as pedophiles. For the record, there is thus far zero evidence linking either Trump or the Clintons to having sex with anyone related to the Epstein case. None of the accusers, and they've accused many people, none of them, uh, you know, uh, in the Epstein case have accused Trump or Clinton, uh, you know, or Bill Clinton or the Clintons as people that Epstein or his assistant, Ghislaine Maxwell, pressured them into having sex with. Could that change? Yes, it could. But again, no evidence so far, despite what Kevin D. Annette and Randy Schock and Judy Byington and those types like to say on Reddit or post in YouTube comment threads, they are just, just talking out their asses. At one point, Epstein also, be, also notably had ties to Queen Elizabeth's son, Prince Andrew. The extent of their relationship is somewhat unclear, but they were spotted walking together in Central Park in late 2010. At, uh, at that point in time, Epstein was already a convicted sex offender. So, you know, best case, poor judgment, poor choice for Prince Andrew to hang out with him. Uh, now let's talk about his recent arrest. Epstein was arrested at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey last month, July 6, after arriving back in the U.S. from France. He was charged uh, by federal prosecutors the following Monday and then pled not guilty. Federal prosecutors also searched his New York City home following his arrest. According to the New York Times, during the search of his townhouse, investigators seized photographs of nude underage girls. According to the Daily Beast, prosecutors wrote the following in a memo requesting Epstein be jailed until his trial. The defendant, a registered sex offender, is not reformed. He is not chastened. He is not repentant. Rather, he is a continuing danger to the community and an individual who faces devastating evidence supporting deeply serious charges. Prosecutors said the case would involve a million pages of discovery, including evidence from his Manhattan mansion. They wanted the trial to begin next June. Prosecutors thought the trial would have lasted four to six weeks. On July 18th, Epstein was denied bail. He had previously said he was willing to post a hundred million dollars per the New York Times. Prosecutors argued that Mr. Epstein's vast wealth, said to be more than 500 million, would make it possible for him to flee the country if he were not held in jail. NBC News reported that Judge Berman said, I doubt any bail package can overcome any danger to the community. On July 24th, Epstein was reportedly found injured in his cell. Though it was unclear initially what happened to him, it was soon apparent that it was a suicide attempt and he was put on suicide watch. And then he was uh, in, you know, in jail and he knew that if convicted of the charges against him, he was going to face a maximum prison of 45 years. Let's look at that indictment to see what those charges were exactly. There were two charges in the indictment, one for sex trafficking, one for a sex trafficking conspiracy. The indictment accused the defendant Jeffrey Epstein of sexually exploiting and abusing dozens of minor girls at his homes in Manhattan, New York, and Palm Beach, Florida, among other locations. It said, in particular, from at least in or about 2002, up to and including at least in or about 2005, Jeffrey Epstein, the defendant, enticed and recruited and caused to be enticed and recruited 
minor girls to visit his mansion in Manhattan, New York, and his estate in Palm Beach, Florida, to engage in sex acts with him, after which he would give the victims hundreds of dollars in cash. Moreover, and in order to maintain and increase his supply of victims, Epstein also paid certain of his victims to recruit additional girls to be similarly abused by Epstein. In this way, Epstein recreated a vast network of underage victims for him to sexually exploit in locations including New York and Palm Beach. The victims described herein were as young as 14 years old at the time they were abused by Jeffrey Epstein, the defendant, and were, for various reasons, often particularly vulnerable to exploitation. Epstein intentionally sought out minors and knew that many of his victims were in fact under the age of 18, including because, in some instances, minor victims expressly told him their age. In creating and maintaining this network of minor victims in multiple states to sexually abuse and exploit, Jeffrey Epstein, the defendant, worked and conspired with others, including employees and associates who facilitated his conduct by, among other things, contacting victims and scheduling their sexual encounters with Epstein at the New York residence and at the Palm Beach residence. When a victim arrived at the New York residence, she typically would be escorted to a room with a massage table where she would perform a massage on Jeffrey Epstein, the defendant. The victims, who were as young as 14 years of age, were told by Epstein or other individuals to partially or fully undress before beginning the, quote, massage. During the encounter, Epstein would escalate the nature and scope of physical contact with his victim to include, among other things, sex acts such as groping and direct and indirect contact with the victim's genitals. Epstein typically would also masturbate during these sexualized encounters, ask victims to touch him while he masturbated, and touch victims' genitals with his hands or with sex toys. Moreover, Epstein actively encouraged certain of his victims to recruit additional girls to be similarly sexually abused. Epstein incentivized his victims to become recruiters by paying these victim recruiters hundreds of dollars for each girl they brought to him. In doing so, Epstein maintained a steady supply of new victims to exploit. Epstein sometimes personally contacted victims to schedule appointments by the New York or at the New York residents. In other instances, Epstein directed employees and associates to communicate with victims via phone to arrange for these victims to return to the New York residents for additional sexual encounters with Epstein. In addition to recruiting and abusing minor girls in New York, Jeffrey Epstein, the defendant, created a similar network of minor girls to victimize in Palm Beach, Florida. Epstein frequently traveled from New York to Palm Beach by private jet, before which an employee or associate would ensure that minor victims were available for encounters upon his arrival in Florida. Right? I mean, so all of this, I mean, it does sound to me like a real-life pedophile ring, right? One where numerous adults conspire to have an adult engage in sexual activity with minors. And and there's other allegations, a very long report, that, you know, he wasn't just one of the uh, the only person victimizing these girls. He would also, you know, have business associates, people he was trying to impress. He would share the girls with them or instruct the girls to sexually satisfy them. And some of his associates who were helping him recruit, like Maxwell, also have been accused of victimizing these girls personally. So it is very pedophile ring esque. I mean, I mean, not even ask. It it does seem to be a, a legitimate pedophile ring. Uh, one Epstein accuser. Virginia Jufri has said that Epstein and his sidekick, Maxwell, directed her to have sex with former New Mexico governor Bill Richardson, Britain's Prince Andrew, wealthy financier Glenn Dubin, former Senator George Mitchell, now deceased MIT scientist Marvin Minsky, modeling agent Jean-Luc Brunel, as well as another prince, a foreign president, a well-known prime minister, the owner of a large hotel chain in France, on and on and on. Still not, still not, you know, ninth circle cult hunting kids and putting their mounted dicks in trophy rooms, but very disturbing. High profile attorney Alan Dershowitz, also accused of having sex with underage girls supplied by Epstein and Maxwell. And who knows who else may be named in the, in the days, weeks, and months to come. Okay, so now let's hop into a second timeline to, to dig into this a little bit further. Uh, this timeline comes from the newspaper that broke the case, the Miami Herald. Strap on those boots, soldier. We're marching down a time suck timeline. Epstein is born in 1953. Uh, Epstein and his younger brother Mark, raised by middle class parents in Brooklyn. His father worked for the city's park department. Uh, while his adult life would be defined by wealth and decadence, his childhood was, you know, very average middle class. In the late 1960s and early 70s, and this is just going to be, you know, it's not an Epstein suck. So a, a little bit more of an overview than some timelines. Uh, the late 60s, early 70s, Epstein dabbled in college education, but never obtained a degree. From 1969 to 71, he attended the Cooper Union School of Engineering. 
A spokesman for New York University told reporters that Epstein took classes as a visiting student there from September 71 to June 74, did not take part in a specific degree program. New York Magazine states that he also attended the Courant School of Mathematics. The Huffington Post confirmed that Epstein landed a gig at the elite Dalton School, a very you know, private prestigious school in New York City's Upper East Side in 73. This is an elite K-12 through college prep school where Epstein would have taught the children of some of New York's wealthiest and most powerful and influential people. Donald Barr was the headmaster at that school when Epstein was hired. Donald is the father of current Attorney General William Barr. Uh, William Barr uh, refused to recuse himself in the Epstein case before Epstein's death despite this conflict of interest. Just interesting to note. According to New York Magazine in his 2002 profile of Epstein, he was something of a Robin Williams in Dead Poets Society type of figure, wowing his high school classes with passionate mathematical riffs. Former Dalton teachers, students, and parents contacted by Huffington Post Rebecca Klein had varied memories of the young instructor, uh, some not remembering him at all, some remembering noticing red flags in his behavior early on, way back then, where he seemed a little too chummy, a little too flirty with some of the teen girls. Others simply recalled the eye-catching fur coat he liked to wear. 1976, Epstein left Dalton, according to New York and Vanity Fair, after a student's father urged him to pursue a career on Wall Street. He then spent a few years as a trader at a now defunct investment bank where he, you know, used his considerable mathematical skill and, and charisma and sales abilities and network abilities to, to have a rapid ascent to the top of this investment uh, bank. He's now not teaching math to the children of New York City's rich and powerful. He's using math to make, you know, these people a lot of fucking money and become real chummy with him. He starts to become pretty rich himself. In 1982, Epstein forms his own investment company, J. Epstein & Co. Not sure if that company is still operational or not after his death. I can't locate a website for them. Maybe they never had one. Uh, they were pretty exclusive. The company claimed to give services to individuals and families uh, with a billion or more to manage. If you wanted to work with them, wanted to work with Epstein, Epstein would take control of the billion plus dollars, charge a flat fee, assume power of attorney to do whatever he thought was necessary to do to advance his client's financial costs. Lex, uh, or Les, excuse me, Les Wexner, founder of underwear maker L Brands, which includes uh, you know, companies like Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works, one of Epstein's clients. Sometime in the 90s, Epstein purchased a secluded compound in Palm Beach, Florida, where it is alleged that Epstein sexually abused many underage girls for money. 1996, Epstein relocated his company to the U.S. Virgin Islands, renamed his company the Financial Trust Co. Uh, the relocation was reportedly made for tax purposes. In 2002, New York reported that the company consisted of 150 purely administrative employees. Public information about the operation hard to find, including a, a list of clients. Uh, Epstein loved to work in secret, and he was very good at it in the digital age. Hard to find info about a lot of this stuff online. In the late 90s, Epstein moved into a Manhattan mansion that is one of the most expensive pieces of real estate in all of New York City. Its value estimated at anywhere from 56 to $77 million for one private residence in Manhattan. How Epstein acquired this mansion uh, remains a mystery. The New York Times reported that Epstein declared it to be his property in a 1996 interview. According to Bloomberg, which cited one anonymous source familiar with the matter, Epstein client Les, you know, Victoria's Secret Wexner, sold the home in 1998 to a company affiliated with Epstein. Public records show the title transfer was not made until 2011, and when it was made, made for no money. Very strange. No substantiation of these rumors, but a lot of people speculate that Epstein had some dirt on Wexner and blackmailed Wexner into giving him that home again. No proof of that, but a lot of speculation about it. Several of Epstein's accusers say the mansion is where he sexually assaulted them. And the mansion's decor, very Ninth Circle-esque, has around 40 rooms, decorated with kind of like a maze-like setup, uh, decorated with stuff like body part sculptures, uh, a huge and haunting self-portrait of Epstein, a life-sized female doll hanging from a chandelier. Uh, when you walk in, you are with, greeted, greeted with, quote, row upon row of individually framed eyeballs imported from England. Oh, all right. Uh, as I say that, I'm like, this is fucking crazy. I'm thinking about, I got pictures of serial killers all over the suck dungeon walls. <laughs> it's a little, it's not going to look good if I, okay. According to one visitor who spoke to the times, there's a chessboard at the bottom of a staircase. That's more than a little creepy. Each of the customized figurines on the chessboard are modeled after one of Epstein's staffers and all of them are dressed sexually suggestively. Huh? I wonder what our Reverend Dr. Uh, Horsecock Johnson Paisley would think. If I had a bunch of statues of him around the suck dungeon, you know, just wearing little speedos, maybe, maybe one finger in his mouth, just suggestively winking. Uh, he'd probably think it was hilarious. I'd probably be more creeped out than him. Uh, 1998 Epstein purchases little St. James Island in the U S Virgin islands in an alarming 1988 report. 
The Associated Press described how people who lived in the areas surrounding Epstein's extremely private oasis started calling it Pedophile Island. When molestation accusations against him were first made public, you know, two decades, a little over two decades ago. Epstein hired hundreds of workers to build a stone mansion on the island, along with a bizarre temple-like structure nearby. Very culty. Most of the former employees of Epstein's refused to speak to the Associated Press, citing long non-disclosure agreements they had signed. Around 1999, allegedly, uh, Epstein forced an underage Mar-a-Lago worker to have sex with Prince Andrew and a lawyer, Alan Dershowitz. In 2015, Virginia Roberts Jufri said in a sworn affidavit that Maxwell initially approached her while she was working at Mar-a-Lago and offered to provide her with massage training. She was then brought to Epstein's Palm Beach mansion, where she said Epstein abused her beginning in 1999 when she was 15. She said the abuse continued for several years, during which she says she was passed around to other famous men. In 2002, Epstein allegedly raped a New York City high school student at his New York mansion. In July 2019, uh, in an interview with NBC's Today Show, Jennifer Rose said she was approached at the age of 14 by a young woman outside her high school in 2001, brought to Epstein's enormous townhouse mansion for the first time. And there he would abuse her and pay her money over the following year, culminating in what she described as a forcible rape. In March of 2005, a 14-year-old girl and her parents reported that Jeffrey Epstein molested her at a mansion in Palm Beach. She said a female acquaintance and classmate at Royal Palm Beach High School had taken her to a house, given him a massage, uh, where she'd given him a massage in exchange for money. In April of 2005, the Palm Beach police began uh, doing trash pulls at Epstein's home, discovering a telephone message for Epstein with a girl's name on it, and a time that matched the time she told police she was there. They find the names and phone numbers of other girls on message slips in his trash. Uh, with the police probe in full swing, by October of 2005, one of Epstein's assailants, or assistants, excuse me, calls one of the girls just as she is being questioned by police. Investigators then begin interviewing more girls as well as Epstein's butlers who tell them that Epstein had frequent visits from girls throughout the day. On October 20th, they execute a search warrant at his house on El Brillo Way in Palm Beach. In May of 2006, police signed a probable cause affidavit charging Epstein and two of his assistants with multiple counts of unlawful sex acts with a minor. The Palm Beach state attorney, Barry Krischer, refers the case to a grand jury. In June of 2006, the grand jury after hearing from only one girl, returns an indictment of one count of solicitation of prostitution. The charge does not reflect that the victim in question and others were minors. Weird. In July of 2006, Epstein's powerhouse legal team tries to negotiate a deal with the state attorney's office. Lawyers discuss a deferred prosecution in which Epstein would enter a pretrial intervention program and serve no jail time. In July, again, uh, after pressure from the Palm Beach police chief, the FBI opens a federal investigation dubbed Operation Leap Year. Documents list the possible crime as child prostitution. By November, the FBI begins interviewing potential witnesses, victims from Florida, New York, and New Mexico. In May of 2007, as the U.S. Attorney's Office prepares to present the case to a federal grand jury, Epstein's attorneys request a meeting to discuss investigation. In September of 2007, federal prosecutors drop several federal plea agreements that are rejected by Epstein and his attorneys. Epstein signs a non-prosecution agreement on September 24th, but his attorneys continue to delay a court appearance. With the non-prosecution agreement still being delayed, or delayed, excuse me, in October of 2007, Acosta meets Epstein lawyer meets with Epstein lawyer Jay Leifkowitz at the West Palm Beach Marriott on Okeechobee Boulevard to discuss finalizing a deal. Among the terms agreed upon, that the victims would not be notified, that the deal would be kept under seal, and all grand jury subpoenas would be canceled. Very suspicious. Everything being hidden. Epstein attorney Leifkowitz calls Acosta in January of 2008, telling him his client will not go through with the agreement because it requires him to register as a sex offender. When the plea negotiations in the Justice Department review still in limbo, in February, the FBI continues its probe, locating more witnesses, locating more evidence. In March of 08, preparations are made for a new federal grand jury presentation. In court documents, the U.S. Attorney's Office notifies uh, that or notes that Epstein's victims are being harassed by his lawyers, who are not specifically named. Then in May, the Justice Department issues findings that if a plea deal cannot be reached, Epstein can be federally prosecuted. Then in June, Epstein's lawyers revisit plea negotiations. And on June 30th, 2006, Epstein appears finally in a Palm Beach County courtroom, pleads guilty to state charges, one count of solicitation of prostitution, one count of solicitation of prostitution of the minor under the age of 18. Sentenced to eight months in jail, asterisk, followed by a year of community control or house arrest. He's adjudicated as a convicted sex offender who must register twice a year in Florida. Uh, I say the asterisk there because the, the place where he stayed is like a like a country club where he got to leave all the time for work. Uh, then in July of 2008, Epstein's victims learn about his plea in state court after the fact 
and they filed an emergency petition to force federal prosecutors to comply with the Federal Crime Victims Rights Act, which was violated. This act mandates certain rights for crime victims, including the right to be informed about plea agreements and the right to appear at sentencing. That did not happen. Epstein's victims learned that he has already been sent to jail in August and that the federal investigation is over. Right? They're still thinking this guy could you know, be sentenced or they're waiting to go to court and they're like, oh, what? It's, it's all done? We weren't told? Uh, they seek to have his plea agreement unsealed. Federal prosecutors argue against releasing the agreement, commencing a year-long court battle to learn the terms of his plea bargain. In October of 08, Epstein begins a work release program from the county stockade. He's picked up by his private driver six days a week, transported to an office, a luxurious office in West Palm Beach, where he accepts visitors for up to 12 hours a day and then returns to the stockade in the evenings to sleep. Some jail sentence. And it's fucking ridiculous. It's a slap in the face to those victims. In July of 2009, Epstein is released from the Palm Beach County stockade five months early. Now he has to register as a sex offender and is on probation for a year, confined to his Palm Beach luxury mansion, uh, other than when he you know, has to travel to his office in West Palm Beach. However, records show he didn't even follow that. He frequently made trips to Manhattan and to his home in the U.S. Virgin Islands. He just did whatever he fucking wanted. In August of 2009, Palm Beach Police Captain George Frick uh, finds Epstein walking along an A1A or along A1A in the middle of the afternoon, this, this road, local road here, where he's supposed to be at work at his office in downtown West Palm Beach. Epstein says he's walking to work, even though he's miles away and not on a direct route. And then his probation officer is notified and says, yeah, he's, he can just, he's just getting some exercise. So again, basically, other than he had to spend a couple nights in some kind of country club jail, where I'm sure he was able to customize his accommodations. I'm sure he had like the finest of pillows, the finest of mattresses. You know, he, he sleeps there and then just goes on with his life of luxury. You know, ah, get the fuck out. The federal non-prosecution agreement is made public in September of 2009. At least a dozen civil lawsuits were filed by women who alleged they were molested by Epstein when they were underage. He begins the process of settling with them out of court. In November of 2009, one of Epstein's former butlers tries to sell to an undercover FBI agent a black book filled with the names of hundreds of girls and young women that Epstein allegedly procured for sex and massages. The butler tells FBI agents he witnessed nude underage girls at Epstein's pool, had known that the, you know, multi-multi-millionaire was having sex with them. He also said he saw pornography involving underage girls on Epstein's computers. The Butler houseman, Alfredo Rodriguez, is later charged himself with obstruction of justice and he's sentenced to federal prison. Fucking, (laughs) really? Oh my God. He dies in 2015. The contents of the black book become public as part of several lawsuits. Uh, The book has the names, addresses, phone numbers from everyone, from Courtney Love to to former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak uh, to Alec Baldwin. And to be fair to those names, Epstein loved to show off you know, uh, knowing famous people also seemed to exaggerate how well he knew those people. So, you know, just because you're in this book doesn't mean you, you did anything or or even hung out with him even one time. He could have obtained, you know, some of these names and numbers from, uh, publicists, managers, and that kind of thing. In April of 2010, flight logs obtained as part of a civil lawsuit, uh, against Epstein show an assortment of politicians, academics, celebrities, heads of state, world leaders flying on his jets in the early 2000s. Among them, of course, former president Bill Clinton, uh, former national security advisor, Sandy Berger, Former Colombian president, uh, Andre, uh, Andres uh, Pastrana, lawyer Alan Dershowitz, actors Chris Tucker, Kevin Spacey, and many, many more. Uh, in November of 2011, Epstein had to register in New York as the highest and most dangerous level of sex offender, despite efforts by him and the New York District Attorney's Office to lower that classification. A level three status means high risk to reap- repeat offense and a threat to public safety exists. Uh, calling himself a celebrated philanthropist, And a renowned educational investor, Epstein undertakes a public relations campaign to counter all the bad press about his sexual exploits from March 2012 through December of that year. His his foundation donates millions to scientific research, sponsors global conferences on ways to achieve world peace and save the planet. He funds cancer and educational research projects around the country and in all likelihood, fucked a whole bunch of high schoolers. January 2015, Virginia Roberts Jufri filed court papers in Florida claiming she was forced by Epstein to have sex with Prince Andrew. Alan Dershowitz uh, provided photographs of her with the prince and with Epstein's close associate, British socialite, Ghislaine Maxwell. She claimed Maxwell worked as Epstein's madam, which uh, Maxwell denies Dershowitz uh, and the prince deny her claims as well. Of course they do. Uh, Setting off a series of legal actions between Dershowitz and Robert's attorneys or uh, Jufri's attorneys that are later resolved in an out-of-court settlement. In September of 2015, Jufri sues Maxwell in federal court in New York, claiming that Epstein's alleged madam defamed her in public statements in the media. The lawsuit is widely viewed as a vessel for Epstein's victims to expose the scope of his crimes. 
Several civil lawsuits filed the same year allege Epstein and Maxwell operate an international sex trafficking operation. On July 6, 2019, Epstein arrested at that New York, uh, you know, New Jersey airport, like we said. Epstein pleads not guilty. And he was going to face, like I said earlier, 45 years if convicted. On July 11th, more than a dozen women who, according to their attorneys, were previously unknown to law enforcement, come forward with sexual abuse accusations against Epstein, according to the Miami Herald. On July 23rd, Epstein found unresponsive in his cell with marks on his neck that suggested he may have attempted suicide. He's hospitalized, returned to his cell, placed on suicide watch, supposed to be monitored. Rumors swirl that someone or perhaps multiple people want him dead. He supposedly can name lots of powerful people. You know, take down a lot of his old friends with him. Friends who supposedly also have been having sex with underage girls. I worry that he will not live until his trial. Many others worry about this as well. Uh, you know, we think that if he if he does die, it's not going to be a suicide, but it's going to be made to look like a suicide. Everybody was talking about that exact thing. And then at 6.30 a.m. on the morning of August 10th, 2019, Epstein, despite having been placed again on suicide watch, found dead in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, MCC in New York City. An autopsy is performed August 11th. No cause of death has been announced. Uh, they are claiming it is highly likely that it is a suicide. The New York City Medical Examiner's Office is waiting further information. And this death in particular adds a lot of fuel to the fire of conspiracies like the Ninth Circle cult because it is extremely suspicious. It also takes us out of our final Time Suck timeline. Good job, soldier. You've made it back. Barely. So Epstein, I can see how his story could lead others to believe in something like the Nine Circle Cult. People knew he molested and raped teens, knew for at least two decades. He kept getting away with it. Even when he was found guilty in court, he still got away with it. Why? Because he was rich and influential and because he had rich and influential friends. And then a bunch of evidence comes out about him really running a pedophile ring. There's, there's a lot of in indicators that he got a more than should have been legal favorable deal in his initial arrest. You know, who was he hiding you know, when you, when you hear all that, it makes you wonder what else could be going on in the world. You know, if this is what we know about, what's going on that we don't know about? Man, all this real life pedophile shit, super heavy, super sad to think about all the real acts of pedophilia far too many people have gotten away with. So before we, we wrap up with some final thoughts, let's take a break from real pedophile scandals and have some fun with that fake one again by going back to the Ninth Circle cult. Let's go back to that well, dip in there one more time with another idiots of the internet. Idiots we got to talk about Kevin and Nett on this one. Uh, you know, after reading about him and looking into some of his books and his beliefs, I, I needed to know more. I ended up watching a few Kevin and Nett videos. This is the mind behind the Ninth Circle cult conspiracy. The guy who thinks that if you can figure out magic words, you're not bound by nation's laws. You know, I guess too bad Epstein didn't know those words. Right? He could have just fucking be like, ah, whatever, I'm out. Just walked right out of jail. The man, This is the man who thinks he overthrew the Canadian government, started a country no one else knows about, Kanata. Uh, on December 4th, 2014, Conscience Media, a YouTube channel based on its content uh, that is dedicated to not having a conscience when it comes to you know presenting gibberish as truth, a channel allergic to accurate media, published a video called Kevin Annette Talks About Saturnalia and the Ninth Circle Cult. Now, Saturnalia was an ancient Roman festival that celebrated the god Saturn, right? Saturn celebra celebrated uh, Saturn in December, Saturn, the god of wealth, agricultural, or agriculture, my god, uh, liberation, renewal, and more. And in this video, a video that is painful to listen to, Kevin tries to, you know, uh, tie his made up ninth circle cult back to the ancient Romans, right? Like it's just been going on since the ancient Roman days. It, you know, the rich and powerful have been casually hunting and fucking kids for, you know, over 2000 years. So he presents his thoughts, which are, you know, what you imagine. Uh, Gia Love Bella Child buys everything Kevin is selling even add some nonsensical facts of her own to the conspiracy writing. Here it is, 2018, when she posted, obviously. Children across the U.S. are being taken by CPS for no reason at all. Studies show that 80% of CPS children are trafficked. The missing numbers for the U.S. are 800,000 per year, where China, a much more sense population, whatever that means, has an average of 15,000, and they still thrive on Haiti. Fucking what? First of all, why do all these people write the same way? They, they all write as if they, they're barely literate. And then, and then studies show that 80% of CPS children are trafficked. What, what fucking studies? Studies that Gia took in her head and then hit in her ass. 
There's no study I can find that even comes close to stating that 80% of GPS children are trained. It's fucking nonsense. User Rayfield Wiseman thinks that Kevin is doing a great job. He posts, go, Kevin. You're the best, smiley face. And then David Ames also thinks that Kevin is doing a great job. And David Ames, oh, seems to be deliciously out of his mind. David writes, yeah, he's also a great prime minister. We have unanimously elected him to be the new prime minister of Kanata. He's doing a bang up job. (laughs) All of his girlfriends have forgiven him for all of his sins against them. He was led by Satan's trapped to date all these girls at the same time. But he has gone on the air asking for forgiveness with tears running down his face. He has asked everyone for forgiveness. It's on YouTube, probably on his website. He's working so hard to make everything right. What? I couldn't find that video. It may exist. Kevin has so many videos and they're not labeled uh, to correspond with what he talks about necessarily. (laughs) How crazy is David guy? He thinks that Kevin is doing a great job running a country that's not real. Who are these people? He thinks that Kevin has sufficiently apologized for a scandal that has rocked the fake leadership of a fake country. Holy shit, this is deep. And you know what? To be, to be uh, honest, it does remind me of a little scandal of my own that I've been meaning to address for quite some time. Uh, I, I want to speak uh, just real quick to the, uh, to the constituents of the uh, Taco Skater Republic. This is a country I created because I like tacos and I like spaghetti. And I think Republic is a fun word. Anyway, listen, you think you're living in the United States? <laughs> Wake up, sheeple. You're living in the Taco Skeddy Republic. And right now, I need you to set down your Skeddy Taco and listen for a sec. I want to apologize for fake executing my fake vice president, uh, the fake Robert uh, McRobert Bobbert. I felt like I had to fake kill him when he fake asked to have some fake sushi added to, as, as a fake official food. And I got so fake mad at, at Bobbert McRobert, McDobbert Bobbert, that I told him that he needed to be fake ex- executed. I was like, I'm going to fucking fake kill you. And he's like, fake, fake don't. I was like, I'll fake will. And then, you know, for you fake Darren to fake suggest that fake sushi should be one of the fake official foods of the fake taco scared public. People, uh, you know, live in a world similar to the one I just threw out there, but they're not kidding. Uh, user Valerie Jones simply posts, Kevin, email me. <laughs> it's like that she posts this on a video not posted on Kevin's channel and also doesn't include her email address. I love it. Oh, Valerie. I don't think you know how the internet works. I want to start doing that, but like in real life. Just yell, yell at people and stuff. You know, just at red lights. Hey, 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 you. Why don't you email me sometime? And just drive off. Maybe do that when I leave restaurants. Thank you. Everything. No, everything was great. Uh, yeah, thanks. You, know, you have a nice, nice, nice night as well. And, uh, thank you very much. Uh, email me sometime. And just leave. Uh, Samantha Mason has some thoughts. She'd like to get out. I get the feeling she doesn't have a lot of room in her head for thoughts. She writes, John Benet, Christmas Eve. She was sacrificed too. These were beautiful children tortured and murdered. What are these demons living among us? Are we in hell? All caps. My favorite part about that post is that it's edited. It shows it has been edited. Somebody proofread that. Somebody proofread John Benet about 10 spaces. Xmas Eve, about 10 spaces. She was sacrificed too. No punctuation. These were beautiful children. Weird spaces. Tortured and de-murdered. Weird spaces. All caps. What are these demons living among us? Lots of spaces, all caps, are we in hell? Finally, a question mark. That's edited. Some Somebody, it wasn't like that originally. Somebody fucking tweaked it, then kind of sat back and goes, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the message I need to get out there. Click, send. Finally, Cindy Lewis has taken Neo's red pill. She decided to step out of the Illuminati illusion. She's outside the matrix. She's outside the matrix that surrounds us. She doesn't like the real world that she sees now though. She writes, hi, Kevin. I can say that within the last year, I have been red-pilled. I have awoken, but with mixed emotions. Thankful, all caps, for individuals such as yourself, fighting for all mankind. Anger, all caps, knowing this kind of genocides have been going on for centuries. All caps, sad, this info has not been brought forward. So, all caps, all peoples around the world were given the truth through news media. And not being hidden in the shadows. And then finally, ending on an all caps crescendo. All this should be brought to light over and over until humanity wakes up. What a world Cindy lives in. Always looking over her shoulder. Always suspicious of evil shadowy forces controlling things. Always wondering if some kid from the neighborhood she hasn't seen in a while has been taken by the Ninth Circle cult. Always wondering when she last fed her many, many semi-feral cats. 
Always checking her Etsy shop to see how many amethyst protection amulets she's been selling. Always frustrated she doesn't have enough money to undergo as many psychic readings as she would prefer. Always viewing the world through her sad, paranoid, far too common based on what I see on, the, on YouTube, wackadoodle lens. Let's get out of here. Idiots of the internet. internet. So the Ninth Circle cult, obviously it's not real. There's, there's, uh, there's no uh, even quasi-legitimate evidence that supports that. No evidence to support the existence of any satanic pedophile cult ever, ever in history. Isn't that interesting? With all the rumors that are out there, try and find one example, one credible example in the entire history of humanity from any country, past or present. Find one example of high-ranking members of society secretly worshiping the devil to, you know, to, to fucking torture and sacrifice kids. I mean, it's... The New York Times published an article in Halloween in 1994 stating that the National Center on Child Abuse and Neglect conducted a study because of all the satanic panic going on at that time. Conducted a study led by University of California psychologist Gail Goodman, which found that amongst 12,000 separate accusations of satanic ritual abuse, there was no evidence for, quote, a well-organized intergenerational satanic cult who sexually molested and tortured children. Although there was convincing evidence of lone perpetrators or couples who say they are involved with Satan or use the claim to intimidate victims, right? So couple kooks out of 12,000 claims, you know, where people probably somewhat similar, were, were, were probably something, you know, similar to past suck subjects like Richard, the Night Stalker, Ramirez, or David Parker Ray, the toy box killer, you know, people who just said satanic shit to, to fuck with people or who claim to be satanic, but really just wanted to be perceived as evil. You know, they, they claim like Richard Ramirez claimed to be satanic. He was never doing in his prison cell or anywhere else, uh, any satanic rituals. He wasn't like studying the satanic Bible. He was just a guy who liked to freak Christians out. Uh, but kids really do get molested and raped far too often. And sometimes their attackers do share them with other perpetrators or at least share their pictures with other victimizers. And sometimes other adults do help cover up those crimes against children or even worse, assist them in their quest to harm children. And those people are the people we should focus on catching and locking away forever. That's what really bothers me about like whack doodles getting worked up over nonsense. I I'm not bothered by them getting fired up. I I I'm just mad that they don't direct their outrage towards real worthy targets because there's plenty of those. Don't waste your time on nonsense like the Nine Circle Cult or Pizzagate. No, direct that rage against real shit like the Epstein case, where in all likelihood, a lot of people really did fuck a lot of kids and are really going to get away with it. These people don't need to wear robes. They don't need to drink baby's blood or be in some, you know, cult to be evil. Evil doesn't have to be cartoonish. And in fact, I don't think it often is. I think it usually shows up looking, you know, like your neighbor, Look, looking like somebody, you know, hiding behind a firm handshake and a winning smile. How did Epstein get away with what he got away with for so long? Because he didn't seem like a weird Satan-y dude. He seemed like a smart, fun guy who's going to make you a lot of money, you know, because he was that guy. Unfortunately, he was also the guy who's going to rape 14-year-olds uh, day after day. When, when looking for real monsters, don't look for cloaks and baby's blood. Don't look for, you know, dicks mounted on trophy room walls. Keep your eye on the guy across the street. Keep your eye on the dude running the youth group or the swim team coach, your goddamn uncle. And it is mostly dudes. I know women do it too, but that's why I'm going with the, the male reference there. The sad truth is that if anybody is going to hurt your kids, probably going to be somebody you know. Probably going to be somebody you don't suspect. That's what the stats say. So don't be paranoid, but do be vigilant. Time now for today's top five takeaways. Time suck, top five takeaways. Number one, there's no ninth circle cult. European royals don't have trophy rooms full of kids' dicks. Number two, the ninth circle cult first showed up not in some gated European forest. It showed up on the computer screen of Kevin D. Annette, the guy who invented a fake international court, the guy currently trying to run a fake North American country. Number three, not one, not one satanic pedophile ring has ever actually been uncovered, ever in the history of the world. Sometimes when there's a lot of smoke, there is not a fire. There is just a lot of wackadoodles bent over, blowing smoke out of their paranoid wackadoodle asses. Number four, while the fears of parents and concerned citizens are certainly not based on nothing, sex trafficking and pedo rings are all too real, the majority of sexual assaults, over 90%, are committed by someone the child knows, usually a family member. Number five, New info. Despite all the scary shit we just went over today, the rate of sexual assault, uh, the rate of rape has actually fallen from 63 or fallen 63% since 
since 1993. That's right. The rate of sexual assaults fallen 63% since 1993. So despite all the pedo talk going on in the news right now, maybe, just maybe, there's less kids, a lot less kids being sexually assaulted than there used to be. Let's hope that trend continues with modern crime-solving techniques, with more people reporting crimes now than they did in the past because of today's technology, because of more law enforcement and social service agencies and organizations being around to make it easier to report pervs. One of these organizations is RAIN.org, R-A-I-N-N.org. They offer resources and information about sexual abuse. You can contact the National Human Trafficking Hotline, toll free, 1-888-373-7888 if you suspect any human trafficking going on around you. I will put that number in the episode description, 1-888-373-7888. Advocates are available 24-7 to take reports of of potential human trafficking. So much darkness in the world, but maybe a bit less than yesterday. Hail Nimrod for that. Let's end on that note, because that's about as positive as it's going to get with today's subject. Time suck. Top five takeaways. Ninth circle sucked. Thanks to the Time Suck team. Thanks to Queen of the Suck, Lindsay Cummins, High Priest of the Suck, Harmony Velikamp, Glad she's in CDA. Jesse Guardian of Grammar Dobner, Reverend Dr. Joe Horsecock Johnson Paisley. Uh huh. Gonna sell that. Bit Elixir. <laughs> Access Apparel. Thanks to Zach, Scriptkeeper Flannery, to all the space lizards who are, uh, you know, who came to the Time Suck Gathering this past Saturday. We'll be talking about after it's actually happened in my life. Next week, the first Wild West suck we've had in way too long. Jesse James and the James Younger Gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hawk ho, dog ho. These bandits and outlaws were heroes to many. Uh, They robbed banks and stagecoaches and trains for two decades. And interesting, yeah, criminals to some, heroes to many. For uh, nearly a decade following the Civil War, the James Younger Gang was uh, among the most feared, most publicized, most wanted confederation of outlaws in the entire American frontier. They were gang number one for quite some time. And we're going to suck them, in particular their leader, Jesse, one of America's most famous outlaws. Apparently, I'm related to several of their gang members. That's what my uncle says. Apparently in the uh, Cummins family tree, a couple members of the James Younger gang. Cannot wait to get my prospector voice back out. We're talking about a lot of things. There's some sifting and whatnot. Old Klondike might show up in this. We'll find out soon. Uh, now let's get into some serious time sucker updates. Updates. Get your time sucker updates. First, a little quick non-vaccination update from Rob Schofield, who writes... You son of a bitch. You call yourself a gun guy, but you continue to call a magazine a clip. Stop it. Love the suck. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Yes, I've been around guns my whole life. Uh, I only have one rifle at home right now. Probably get more soon. There is a shooting range right down the street that I would like to find time to go to. And I'll probably still uh, fuck up the terms, though, because I just just never get into those details. I'm the same way with trucks. I like trucks. I drive a truck. Uh, I admire other trucks. I'm I'm like, that's a cool truck. But if you ask me what your model of random truck was, I'm not going to know 90% of the time. But I will try to get better. I love the enthusiasm the you uh, gun lovers have. Now, the first of several vaccination updates. The first one comes in from Erica Case. Erica writes, Master Sucker, Space Lizard Erica here. I just listened to your anti-vaxxer episode, and you didn't mention that crazy viral video about the girl who had a flu shot. Girl got a flu shot, and it supposedly made her uh, to where she could only walk backwards and made her speech completely destroyed. I hope you see this message and address this because when I was younger, that video terrified me about flu shots. Can't wait for the upcoming cult suck. Love all you do. Really hope you come back to Nashville soon. Keep on sucking. Praise Bo Jangles. Thank you, Erica. You know, I never mentioned that video because I did not know it existed. But thanks to you, now I do know, and now I've seen it and seen some other videos uh, that were taken after that video came out. Yes, the video you speak of originally aired on Inside Edition. One of the show's most popular segments, and then online, it did go viral. And the video was a uh, young woman named Desiree Jennings. In 2019, or excuse me, 2009, the 26-year-old Washington Redskins cheerleader claimed she had acquired a rare neurological disorder called dystonia from a flu shot. So the symptoms came on immediately after she got the shot. On the Inside Edition piece, yes, yeah, she spasms, and, and yeah, she can't speak properly unless she's walking backwards. Or jogging, but otherwise she's she's just twitching out. Excuse me, can't speak. Well, after the clip you saw went viral, uh, Inside Edition did secret surveillance on Desiree for for weeks, and wouldn't you know it, when she didn't know she was being filmed, walking around totally fine, 
totally fine. No stumbling, no spasms at all. Uh, no slurred speech. She is 100% fine. And then they ambushed her, TMZ style. And, uh, and initially she was fine and then started to slip into the thing she claimed originally. Uh, Inside Edition interviews, uh, after they, they catch her, they, they also interview Dr. Stephen Novella, the neuro, uh, neurology professor and critical thinking expert that I've mentioned. I've mentioned him several times when talking about the Great Courses Plus. Uh, this guy is an expert in dystonia. And he said on Inside Edition that her symptoms did not match that disease. And then when, yeah, when Inside Edition confronted her about faking her disorder, she spoke normal for a second and then slipped into a Australian-ish accent. Even though she's from Ohio, she said that the, uh, the disease, the flu shot gave her an accent now. And <laughs> Dr. Novella addressed that saying, there's no way a flu shot can cause someone's accent to change. And you can feel him holding back an eye roll when he says that, fighting the urge to say, yeah, she's full of shit. Uh, then Desiree tried claiming that some new age healer cured her dystonia in 48 hours using completely debunked treatment techniques. Also, when Inside Edition first confronted Desiree again in the parking lot, yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, I already, I already said this, I jumped ahead of my notes. Yeah, speaking totally normal. And then when she walks away, she also walks, you know, with spasms and a limp. So clearly she faked the whole thing. Why? Nobody knows for sure. People are crazy. Maybe she's trying to get money. Maybe she just wanted the attention. Uh, sorry that she made you afraid uh, of getting a flu shot. Desiree, uh, and sadly, sometimes now people still point to that. Isn't that, again, with the kind of the lore of how things work? You know, it's like the ninth circle cult. You know, this one guy makes up something and then people later will just point to it as, as like evidence, even though it's complete nonsense. Same thing with this. People will be like, yeah, what about that girl? I mean, come on. That girl right after her flu shot, she had all these spasms. You know, she can't speak right. Yeah, she can. You just didn't see the second part when it was debunked. Another vaccination update from time sucker Mark Johnson. Mark writes, holy fuck balls. I must throw my hat in with a suck master supreme on vaccination debate. I really don't think people understand how real a threat this is. I'm going to give you all a little info. I and any other veteran you might know were privy to going over yonder to Iraq. I have what we used to call the old folks scar on my left shoulder. I'm 37. It looks like someone stuck an old car lighter to the skin. This is the smallpox vaccination. If you check grandparents, most will have it. Uh, but there's a giant gap where the vaccine was no longer needed as a suck master informed. So why were veterans of Iraq in the 2000s given this? Apparently the terrorists had found a way to weaponize the virus. We were informed that if smallpox were to break out again on U.S. soil, it would take a third of our population before they could get it under control. We no longer manufacture the virus in large quantities. So it is crucial we continue to vaccinate for viruses that can still pose a threat. Hail Nimrod, praise Bojangles, vaccinate your fucking kids. Holy shit, Mark. Yeah, thank you for that update. I had no idea uh, that that happened. After your update, I Googled it. Yeah, sure enough, just like you said, President George H.W. Bush made sure to inoculate U.S. soldiers heading into Iraq with a smallpox virus because of the threat you just laid out. Yes, preventing soldiers from bringing a biological weapon back into an unvaccinated and defenseless civilian population, another reason to vaccinate. It would be, uh, you know, a tragedy on a scope we have not seen in our lifetime or, yeah, it, it would just be unprecedented in the, the scope of death that would occur. Thanks for that update. Thanks for your service. Another vaccination update from Tony Lee. Tony writes, hey, Dan, hail Nimrod. Just wanted to see if I could pick your brain a bit more about the vaccination stuff. While I wholeheartedly agree with everything you said in this most recent suck, there is one phenomena that I would say is pretty inevitable and it makes me sick to think about. You mentioned a few concepts like herd immunity or the idea that communism will always fail because of human corruption. And I agree with those things as you've stated them. However, uh, on the same tangent, and I hate how close I'm feeling to getting to being anecdotal, what about things like the Tuskegee experiments? When our own government in recent history performed a racist experiment using syphilis, thinking of that as incident and others of that nature, how can you blindly trust the mystery juice that they shoot you up with at Walmart? I'm not arguing against vaccinations, just that I'd like to be able to have more faith that I'm getting what I want from it for my child's sake at least. In any case, pet the best boy Bojangles for me. <laughs> Rub one out for Lucifina's suck on my man. Uh, great points, Tony. Why should we trust the government? when they have for sure lied to us in the past. Very fair. My answer would be this. The Tuskegee experiment is the exception to the rule. While the U.S. government has for sure done things to abuse the trust of its own citizens and harm its own people, as far as we know, th those things are the exception to the norm. In the vast majority of medical situations, doctors have done whatever the current scientific knowledge uh, base says is the best thing to do for our safety. So while the government might 
be trying to hurt us. The odds are much in, more in favor of them trying to help us. And all of medical science tells us that if we don't get vaccinated and a bad disease rolls through, that we are fucked. So for me, it's about playing the odds. Is there a small chance something shady can be going on? Yes. But I think it's a very, very, very small chance. And I'll discuss this in a little bit more depth in, in, in one of these next updates here. But I think, you know, if you're just going to play the odds, much more likely that not vaccinating your kids will cause more harm than vaccinating them, which is why it makes sense to me to get vaccinated. Uh, hail Nimrod to you, Tony. Now for this, uh, a great argument in favor or some great, you know, points brought up in favor of not getting vaccinated. Uh, or at least how we shouldn't be, you know, forced to be vaccinated, sent in from time sucker Jesse Bogart. Jesse writes, Dan, I want to start with this. All of my kids are vaccinated. Also, sorry for the long email. However, this was a subject I struggled with a lot. I did a ton of research on the subject and came to the same conclusion that you came to, but most of your arguments suck. Uh, first, the freedom argument is a poor one. The argument that because these freedoms are, or, excuse me, the argument that because these other freedoms are taken from us, then you can't fight the other freedoms being reached for is the definition of a slippery slope. Second, the idea that we should trust a doctor because of their training is historically wrong. Doctors use bleeding, leech uh, leeches, lobotomies, masturbated angry women to cure hysteria. Uh, doctors for years pushed Oxycontin. <laughs> actually, I don't know why I skipped that. You had a really funny parenthetical. Uh, this one actually works in my experience regarding the uh, hysteria. Uh, doctors for years pushed Oxycontin because they were convinced by the pharmaceutical companies that it was safe. I think that the medical community and primarily the pharmaceutical companies have built an empire on buying legislation. For example, look up Me Too drugs, a way for pharma to bypass common patent laws, and buying medical schools and doctors through donations and incentives. Can you say that you believe that if a major pharmaceutical company knew they could be making a swimming pool full of Scrooge McDuck gold coins, but some kids might get autism, they would pull the vaccine off the market? This, in my opinion, is why the anti-vax movement has taken hold, because they have proven themselves to be untrustworthy. However, after a pile of research, I decided that the biggest risk of vaccination far outweighed the biggest risk of not. But I could see why someone might slide off the other side of that argument. Just some food for thought. Thanks for the great content. Love the podcast and your stand-up. Keep up the great work. Jesse. Jesse, I love your mind, man. Uh, wish I would have talked to you before I did that episode, because you brought up some great counterpoints to what I laid out. Is giving away freedoms a slippery slope? Sure. It is. I'm not denying that. But as I said in the suck, I just think it's a slope that we're already on. That was my point of the analogy. Like we've already given up freedoms. Does that mean we should give up all of them? No, but it does mean that giving up some, you know, uh, but does it mean that giving up some will lead us to having all of our rights taken away? Also, no. Also, I don't think no. Sorry. I have to look at my notes because I want to carefully say this. Uh, Reverend Dr. Joey Horscock Johnson told me that right before car seats became legally mandatory, there was the same pushback. Don't tell me what I can and can't do, you know, from freedom loving citizens, uh, citizens who are worried that if they, you know, let the government tell them that they could, had to put their kids in a car seat, what other freedoms would they lose? But then study after study showed that, you know, car seats saved thousands of children's lives. First responders got tired of shoveling toddlers corpses off the road after minor traffic accidents. So lawmakers said your freedom, right, can take a back seat, uh, you know, pun intended to safety on this one. So put your kid in the car seat in the back seat or get a ticket. And then thousands of kids now don't die every year because of that freedom being taken away. And I'm using the same logic in favor of mandatory vaccination. And as for your second argument, and is there a history of quackery in the medical field? Yes. I've done a stand-up bit on exactly that concept, right? Just whiskey, load them, so. Uh, but, you know, it, it's different now. Uh, studies are done differently now. Studies are now done you in the scientific method. That, that wasn't available in the whiskey laudum saw days. Doctors and researchers, uh, not in the big in the pockets of big pharma, can do independent studies. They have independently verified the safety of vaccines. Also, doctors in other countries, not part of our Me Too drug laws, have also verified the effectiveness and safety of vaccines. So while I see your point, I also understand that because our info can be shared across the world different than it ever could be before, it would be so much harder now for doctors to pull off, you know, pushing shitty vaccines on the public, they, they would have to pull it off in numerous countries. Numerous countries, doctors would have to be blind to this happening or be paid off. The scope of it, I don't think is able to work. Um, but again, lo love the points you make. And that's why when it comes to vaccines and any other medical practice, I think we need to have independent watchdog organizations, make sure our government and big pharma are doing what they're supposed to do. 
And so while I say I'm pro-mandatory vaccines, I'm pro as long as it comes with strong, independent governmental oversight. Uh, So thank you again, Jesse. Love you calling me out. I I did not do a good job of explaining how rational the concerns of anti-vaxxers are in many respects. Uh, Okay, one last one. And I'm sure I'll do more next week. So many were sent in. A whole two-hour episode's worth easy. Space lizard Adam Reitz from Minnesota has an interesting perspective on all this. Uh, Adam writes, hey, Master Sucker. OG space lizard Adam from Minnesota responding to this week's suck about vaccines. I've been waiting on this suck for a while since it's a subject near and dear to my heart. I have a 10-year-old son with severe ASD, autism spectrum disorder. He's mostly nonverbal and needs constant care and supervision. He does a lot of stimming, which is short for self-simulation. It's a way for autistic people to deal with overstimulation from the world around them or calm jittery nerves. Stimming can take on a lot of different forms, but his involves a lot of hand flapping, humming, and when he's really excited, screaming. It's pretty much nonstop all day, and he can really get on our nerves. But at the same time, it helps him, and there's not a lot we can do to stop it anyway. Despite all of that, he's really a happy, loving kid with a great sense of humor. He likes to play practical jokes and see if he can gross out his mom, which I enjoy very much. The way I see it, his ASD doesn't define him, and underneath it is a great kid if you take the time to get to know him. I want everyone to know that there's an intelligent, curious, and funny kid underneath the autism. He's going into fourth grade and for the most part is on the same intellectual level as his peers. Just needs a different classroom structure to help him learn. I give that background because it's made it, I've made it a mission in my life to raise autism awareness. We don't keep him shut in at home and try to get him out to socialize and learn how to function in the world. We get a lot of different reactions out in public. ASD is an invisible disorder. And by that, I mean it's not outwardly apparent like other disorders like Down syndrome. People see a seemingly normal-looking 10-year-old having a meltdown like a toddler because he doesn't handle disappointment well. I used to be bothered by people staring, but now I let it ride. If someone says something, I use it as an opportunity to talk to them about autism, what it is, what it's not. Most people just try to ignore him. The great ones engage him at his level and treat him like a normal kid. Then comes the ignorant shit. Was he vaccinated? Yes, he was. And guess what? I was, his mom was, and I bet you were too. I do my best to point out that science that supports the safety of vaccines and the debunking of the link between autism and vaccines, but there are a lot of interweb experts out there that just don't want to listen to science. The fact that people trust Jenny McCarthy for medical advice more than doctors baffles me. The other one that really gets me is the, yeah, well, autism didn't exist when I was a kid. Something changed. As you pointed out in the suck, yes, it did. You just didn't see them because they usually got locked away. It makes me incredibly sad to know that if my son was born 50 years ago, he probably would have had been diagnosed with childhood schizophrenia, feeble-mindedness, sent off somewhere to be institutionalized. I had a really hard time listening to the Penthurst suck. As far as what really causes autism, you did a great job of breaking it down. Our family is participating in a genetic study of autistic kids and their immediate families being conducted by several universities to identify the genes that affect the brain and increase risks for autism. We just got the results back last week. In the case of our son, he is caused by, or it is caused, uh, his autism is caused by a very rare mutation of the TBR1 gene that happens sometime right around conception. Neither I nor my wife carry the same mutation, nor does our neurotypical three-year-old daughter. They're still not sure what would have caused this mutation or exactly what the implications are. I asked if we can call my son an X-Men, and according to my wife, I'm not funny. This gene was only recently identified. There are less than 100 known cases worldwide. I'm sure there are probably a lot more. Our hope from these genetic studies is that someday there might be treatments to help him or at least to help him or at least to help other people identify risk factors or begin treatment sooner. In the short term, it doesn't change anything about how we care for him and love him, but it does give us peace of mind to know that it was nothing that we did. Nor does our daughter need to worry about increased genetic risk if she decides to have kids someday. Anyway, this has turned into a long email. I have to go pull a toilet. I have to go pull a toilet to retrieve a toy. Oh, pull a toy out of a toilet. Our son is flushed. It happens about every three months here. Sometimes I just have to keep reminding myself that I love that little newt. Hail Nimrod. Keep on sucking, Adam. Thanks so much, Adam. What a great perspective you have on all this. And the favorite point of mine that you bring up is that, you know, that you know that, you know, your son being on the autistic spectrum is not your fault. You know that getting him vaccinated did not you know, uh, influence in any way him be on, him being on the autistic spectrum at all. Uh, and how cool of you for participating in that study? I mean, hopefully with enough studies like that, science can figure out what does lead to autism and we can put the vaccination debate to rest forever. Thank you all for taking the time to send in those messages. Hail 
Nimrod. Next time, suckers, I needed that. We all did. That's all for today. I was sure this was going to be a short episode. I swear they can't all be this long. I do want to do some shorter ones. What the hell's wrong with me? Uh, if you do want episodes of a more reasonable length, you should subscribe to Scared to Death. Those ones are going to clock in at around an hour. Uh, subscribe. Check out the trailer for Scared to Death. Bad Magic Productions on YouTube. Uh, if you like it, please, I only ask that you leave enough time in your life to keep on sucking. <laughs> Hey, before we get out of here, I got to uh, uh, put together an artist or author bio really quick. I'm going to throw some stuff up on Amazon. Uh, let me just type it out here. Hey, thank you for reading this. Hope you are liking things that people read. I like to go and talk to people sometimes at the library. Books are pretty fun. Do you think trucks are better to drive than cars? Sometimes I wonder about my grandpa when he told me that fishing for bass is usually more fun than trout. Hey, grilled cheese is better when it's more warm. Don't you agree? I like it. Anyways, I don't know about highlighters. You know, sometimes I think a succulent might be better than a deciduous type plant because of the watering. It's hard to say. I like things that are red more than purple, I've noticed. That's kind of weird. Anyway, I'm hungry. See you later. <laughs>